stimulating late night sports conversation for people who know that just trying to find someone sober to talk to at this time of night is like trying to find a pig on the moon. In the early morning, No rules news debate from around the world and around the bend. Uh, the two mics. Apply more lager. On Talk Sport. Yeah. Do you see the I always went down the dog section, even though I didn't have a dog. Right. And I used to buy, like, packets of those chewy things. Right. And well, those were OK. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, but not in the volume I was giving them to the dog. Well, how many were you giving him? About 12 a day, because he liked them. And I, I thought... Only threw uh, up on Alan's sugar. Uh, w- this is Talk Sport Extra Time with the two mics, and I'm delighted to say it's time to say a very warm welcome to Mr Mike Porky Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr Parry. And a very good morning to you, MG, and what a pleasure it is to be here again. The the Raheem Sterling saga just doesn't go away. It does Every day, every 12 hours, produces a new line. For instance, he goes to the Liverpool Awards ceremony yeah. and gets booed by a section of the crowd. Right. Hardly surprising, really, Not when really. after making quotes that he's getting bullied about only taking 100 grand a week. Yeah. And then you see some of the newspaper headlines from tomorrow morning, Manchester City lining you up for £200,000 a week, yes. right? So if you if you just take that as a percentage, you can't blame anybody who wants to double their money, can you? You can't really, no. I mean, the difficulty is, as I would say to Steve there, the caller from LA, I think the thing that people objected to the most is that this season has been totally dominated mm. by Raheem Sterling's negotiations, yeah. not about whether he's yeah, made a agree. decision, not about whether he's going to go, whether he's going to stay. Yeah. It's just all about the uncertainty, but, but, and I but, think but fans get fed up with it. But that's as much the fault of um, the club as it is of Raheem Sterling. He was a young man, 20 years of age. You should have been sat upon, I think, by the administrators at Liverpool Football Club yes. and not allowed him to run riot with the publicity machine, which mm. you know, which, which he's manipulated far better than, uh, than the people he works for, Liverpool Football Club. And the, and the other thing is, and this, this is another aspect of it, uh, one of the headlines in tomorrow morning's back pages, owners will grill Rogers over slide. Brendan Rogers faces an end-of-season meeting with Fanway Sports Group as they demand answers to why Liverpool's season finished in failure. You're absolutely right. One of the reasons it finished in failure is because Raheem Sterling seemed more occupied about where he's going to be playing next season yeah. than focusing on playing this season. Well, exactly. He scored seven goals in the Premier League, yeah, which, abs- is hardly, uh, uh, which is hardly superstar uh, status, ab- is it? Absolutely. And does it, does it mean that Brendan Rogers, who I've said in the past has always had a knack of handling big players, that's why Luis Suarez blossomed under his tutelage right. at uh, Liverpool. But has Brendan Rodgers lost the ability to harness the talent of extremely good players and perhaps more pertinently, harness the personalities and the characters yeah. of these big players who think they're too, too big for Liverpool? It is a sign. It is a sign when a boy is so anxious to go away from Liverpool that Liverpool are no longer regarded as one of Liverpool of one of Europe's mm. stellar clubs. Well, this not, is the not actually even one of England's stellar clubs anymore. Well, when they're hoping that maybe the best they can do is get perhaps Theo Walcott, as one of their fans said, yeah. uh, you know, who's a great player, but but you might say injury prone, a little bit past his best, uh, and possibly. Oh, I don't think um, that's true, with Theo Walcott. I think I don't think we've seen the best of Theo really? Walcott yet, to be honest. But I well, don't think he'll go to Liverpool. No, I think Joe Cole, you know, will 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 tell you that the move is so dramatic from you know. If you're a southern boy, in particular, and then and then going north, and then trying to live up to the the huge international reputation Liverpool has, yeah. but but who don't have it at the moment, if right. you understand what I mean. The huge international heritage, I should say, but yeah. no reputation at the moment, is, is, is a tough old ask. Mm. But the problem, I think, for, uh, for, for Raheem Sterling is that, you know, if Brendan Rodgers goes before these guys at, uh, at the uh, Fenway Sports Group who then say to him, look, part of our strategy, our money ball strategy, is to keep Raheem Sterling for another couple of years, mm. uh, or at least another one year, maybe, mm. and sell him on for even more money. You know, maybe this time yeah. next year we can get £70 million for him from yeah. Real Madrid. And they say to him, look, we don't think you're really doing all the right things to keep this boy. Uh, maybe we'll have to get no, a different I, manager. I totally agree with you. I think that's what they will say to him. You know, why can't you keep your staff happy? And and, and also, they're going to tot it up, you know, over the mm. last uh, three years. Uh, Stephen Gerrard's been lost without a penny in compensation. Yeah. Jamie Carragher was lost without a penny in compensation. Uh, Suarez went for 75. That's fine. No problem. But they're going to lose Raheem Sterling. But they spent all that on a load of players coming in who yeah, haven't exactly, are. apart I, from I, Coutinho, I, hasn't really done anything. I totally agree. And and, and I don't think it's uh, it's been a great performance by the people in charge of the buying and selling at the club and bringing in new talent. I want to talk to you too about Rory McIlroy, right? OK. Now, how many times have I told you that the best way to get on in life is to be single-minded to the extent where you have to make yourself an individual. Every man is an island. 
when he is seeking to progress his career. Why, is that are, you, right? why are you smiling? Well, because this, why is, you a, this, is, a, this is a well worn sort of every, track of yours, ev- isn't it? Listen. And what you're saying to me is that anyone who gets married cannot be as no, successful no, in life. I'm not That's saying that at saying. all. I'm saying every man is an island. Now, now I've been researching this, right? Yeah. With the help of a few um, golf uh, aficionados. Oh, yeah, some of your friends in the golfing world. Yes, that's right, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Uh, Rory's... Because they're all in town, of course, with Wentworth, aren't uh, they? Well, exactly. Mm. They're all around, and mm. it's a BMW, isn't it? And if Rory wins that, he'll have won the last three uh, competitions on, right. the, on the tour, yeah. which is almost unprecedented. Now, uh, Rory's form... Um, since his breakup with the uh, rather wonderful young lady. What was her name again? Caroline Wozniacki. That's right, Caroline Wozniacki. That's exactly it. Now then, um, before, in the year before he split up with Ms Wozniacki, yeah. he played in 24 events, he won one, he was runner-up in three, he had top 10s in 12 competitions, top 20s in 15, he missed the cut in two competitions, and his prize money was £2.4 million. Not a bad year. In the year after splitting up with Ms Wozniacki... He played the same number of events, 24, mm. but compared to one win in the previous year, he won seven. Compared to three runners-up, he was runner-up four times. Compared to 12 top 10s, he was 16 top 10s. Compared to 15 top 20s, he was 20 top 20s. He missed the cut in the same number of competitions too. His prize money, compared to 2.4 million mm. in the year before, yeah. eight. Point four million. But was he happier, though? That's the question. So you just tell well, me... Well, was he happier? That's the question. Well, of course he's happier. How do you, you know he's happier? Well, because he's well, got £8.4 you know million pounds in his back but pocket. But he's lost the beautiful Caroline Wozniacki he's won because, seven, he got, no, because he but, got cold feet about getting married. Well, it doesn't seem to have affected him too badly. If, if his nervous system's been shattered, if his pride's been hurt, if his uh, uh, amour has been uh, punctured... Punctured, dented. Uh, the, 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 it, it doesn't show it. It doesn't show well, it. it. Well, no, it doesn't show it because that's not yeah. the part of him that you see. You know, what you see is what's on top of the uh, the water. No, no, what no, what see you see is everything is with Rory McIlroy. Is not what's underneath the no, water. No, 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 he's no, he's not what I'd call the duck personality. You haven't got something on the surface and then the legs you know, flapping around wildly underneath. Everything you see about Rory McIlroy right. is Rory McIlroy, OK? All right, well, let's compare him to Tiger Woods after his episode with, yeah. the, uh, with the Cadillac Escalade and the fire hydrant and the nine iron. Yes. And the lovely Mrs Woods, who mm-hmm. kicked him out of the house in Florida because of what he was getting up to. That's right. He's been absolutely hopeless since he's been on his own. Yeah, of course he has. So but how does that uh, pan out, then? Because, because he went into Singledon on the back of a shameful episode of um, alley cat behaviour in his private life, right? right? yeah. Why, why, are you, why, why are you laughing? Why, I can't why? believe you're calling Tiger why? Woods an alley cat. Well, it was alley cat behaviour. I'm not calling him an alley cat. Really? I'm not calling Tiger Woods an alley cat. Okay. I'm saying it's alley cat behaviour yeah. in his private life mm. combined with yeah. difficulties physically in his professional but, life. But, you know, his alley cat behaviour was mm. going on while he was winning. I wish it was, yes. And this is what I put my point to you, is, mm. which, which tells you an awful lot about him, because ever since he stopped his alley cat behaviour, yeah. he's lost everything. Well, the thing is, he resorted to alley cat behaviour quite recently, didn't he, according to one of well, his I friends? Well, I can't say. Well, wasn't it, didn't he say, he'd fallen off the, um, the sexual bandwagon or something? The sexual bandwagon? Something like that. I didn't know it? there was such a thing. No, you know when people go back to drink, they fall off yeah. the wagon? Yeah, yeah. And a friend of his made a reference to he, uh, he faulted on the, on the sex issue again or something, right. didn't he? Or something like well, that. Well, he know. faulted on the sex it bandwagon. Made, basically, he got back to to, you know, the old rumpy pumpy <laughs> with people who he's not married to. But, I mean, that doesn't matter because he's not married anymore. And divorced, Lindsay, so. and Lindsay Vaughan, of course, uh, has, uh, has keyed off, hasn't she? Yes, absolutely, yes, yes. So, so, so the time, by the way. So, well, listen, the time's unimportant when I'm, you know, uh, discussing huge <laughs> issues theory, with you. Your theory is Tell me you, is you use the time always as a, you know, as a no, handbrake U-turn to get... Yeah. Of course oh, I'm delighted. I see. And it was a huge margin, I think, of success, wasn't it? You don't need to know the entire score, really. I, I think we do. Well, it doesn't really matter, does no, it? No, of course it, it does. Why is that important? No, it's very important. Important because the percentages are what it's all about. I've just told you that. So perhaps you could uh, tell the audience what the well, score was, please. I don't, think, I don't think I've ever read the score out before. Yes, I've you have. Just said whether I've no, won or whether no, you've no, won. no, no. All the way through last night's show, after the competition, you said, and the score is this and this. So yeah, I'd no, like I know, know. But at the end, normally yeah, I just yeah. say, you know, that either I won it or no, you won it. Well, I'm sorry. I'd prefer uh, an exact um, okay. appraisal, well, well, please. This is week five, okay? Yes. Uh, and you've got one, and I've got four. That's the score. No, I want the total number of votes cast, please, in last night's poll. Total number of votes yes, cast. Please. Yeah. Total number of votes cast is let's see, two hundred and seventy three. Yes, and how many for me? Uh, one hundred and eighty seven for you, and eighty six for me. My God, that's a massacre. Well, it's an absolute yeah, massacre. I tell, I tell you, since since Woo-hoo. since I knew that you would gloat, mm. right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, th- I didn't want to really do this, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to invoke mm. Uh, mm. you know clause. 
53B. Oh, what's that? Which is that if you try and encourage people to vote uh, and tell people that you've won already, yeah. but while the vote is still going on, yeah. uh, then the vote gets declared null and void. OK, I'd like to invoke Clause 53C. OK, what's that? And that, that is that when you're so badly stung yeah. and when you've lost and when you're feeling battered and bruised mm. when you got up today, you send out a tweet calling me the worst possible name in that the English language, that which, was, were, which that was is a typo. disgraceful... That was a, no, that was a mistake. Against the family value uh, values no, that, that we have for this show. That was a mistake. I don't believe it was a mistake. It was a mistake. You I meant called to say me count. a word which, which I is... I meant to say count, OK? And it came out wrong because somehow my autocorrect changed it to a word which is unmentionable. That, I don't no, believe that. I didn't mean that. to call you that at I don't all. Believe I'm very that, sorry. I don't believe that autocorrect changes words to nasty, vindictive... Uh, disgusting swear words. I believe no. they do the opposite. Well, it must have done, because it's the only explanation. No, no. Because you, if you, you, read, you quite deliberately... If you read the, the tweet properly, you can see that it was supposed to say the word count, and unfortunately yeah, this, it just didn't. Missed this, out a letter. to me, illustrates, and to our millions of listeners, the sort of person you really are. Not you at know. all. When you're up against it, when you've, the lost, point the, of my when tweet, you've lost the no, argument... The point of my tweet was mm. to say to you that if you... Um, it's, basically, it's like a general election. If you start calling the result before mm. the voting has been cast, then that is an irregularity. I, I wasn't calling a result. You I were. Wasn't. You were saying it was clear that you'd won. I was saying it was clear that I had the major argument, that I had the better um, uh, answers to the questions and that it was inevitable yeah. that I was going to get the audience on my side because we changed round the uh, voting procedure. I asked for to be the favourite mm. uh, button last night, didn't I? And you were the, you were the no, retweet you, button. No, you asked for favourite. I asked for favourite, yeah. that's right, and I got it. And, and I think you, were about stick... to say, you were about to say that uh, you got it the other way round and no, that no. was how you won. No, 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 I'll stick with favourite from now on. I think you'll find... So you want to stick with favourite from now on. Yes, I okay. do. Yes, well, next yeah. week we'll do you yeah. as favourite, and that'll yeah, be okay. fine. Okay. I mean, surely if you alternate it, that's mm. the fairest in, in case uh, of any kind yeah. of gerrymandering accusations. Exactly, and I'm feeling, by the way, very... What do you mean exactly? That's just the complete opposite thing of what you said you wanted. I'm sorry, what? Yeah, you're not listening, are you? I'm listening. You're not listening I'm at all. Listening. No, you're not. You've done it again. No, no. You just said to me you want to be stick to favourites yes. for the rest of time. Yes. I just said to you, no, I think we should alternate it because that would be fairer. Okay, and that's fine. And you just said, yes, all right then, because you weren't listening. That's fine. That's fine by me. All right. I, I have no fear. I'm also extremely confident about this week's quiz. Are you? It's on the Eurovision Song Contest. Yes. I've been sure watching some build-up programme. We've never done it before, I'm sure believe me. we've done the Eurovision no, Song Contest. No, we have not, believe we me. We may have to ask the audience. No, no, I think we may have done Now, listen, I want to talk anyway, to you. Anyway, congratulations. I, unlike you, you, Thank you. Uh, I don't accuse you of gerrymandering the result. Mm. I don't accuse you of cheating. I don't accuse you of somehow, uh, you know, you know, in, in, in illegally influencing the audience. I'm oh, very yeah. happy for you to have won. Yeah. And, and, you know, if you win three more, you'll have caught up with me, is yeah. all I can say. I, I, I'm not sure I, I believe any of that, but uh, but there we are. Now, I want to talk to you, right, about um, a social issue which is very, very dear to your heart yes. and mine, and that is the amount of booze that she's taken every week, because I'm, I'm watching a programme tonight, OK, because I've been keeping an eye on this programme, to be honest, um, for quite some time uh, in its making, because uh -huh. it's been made by two doctors, two doctors. What's this? It's a, it's a programme on the amount of alcohol and, and how much it damages yeah. you when you drink it. So you want to do this on Porky Vision, then? No, I don't. No, oh, okay. No, this no. It's over and above television. Oh, it's, it's over and above television. Yeah. Way above. And I tell no. you why. The 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 experiment is conducted by two twin doctors. How about that? Twin brothers. Do you know when I was a kid, mm. uh, my GP was two twins. Really? Yeah. What well, you mean? You, he was one of uh, twins. One no, of well, twins. both of them were doctors, and they were both what, in the practice. same practice. Yeah. Good God, that's amazing. Yeah. They don't like each other. Of course they did. They were twins. No, well, yeah, but you, you can have you can have non-identical twins. <laughs> Uh, have... Well, even non-identical yeah. twins look. Like, they looked identical. No they looked identical. My my little sister Jill, who's one year younger than me, and yeah. me, we both had ginger hair. My other sister had um, dark brown hair. Yes. And everybody thought me and Jill were uh, twins. Yeah. All but our, you weren't. Though. All our lives, we weren't. Did no. you look alike? Yeah, we looked alike. Did yeah. You? Yeah. Yeah. We had freckles and all that. Were kind you of identical? Stuff. Not identical, no, not identical twins, because we weren't twins, but we looked, uh, <laughs> we, we, we looked like them. Right. Now then, I want to tell well, you about this. my sister and I often were, were accused of being twins. At yes, yes, I can believe that. But it's now, very confusing with these two Polish doctors that we had, though, I must say. Oh, Poles, were they? They were Polish, yeah. Oh, there weren't many Polish doctors around in those days. Really? No. There were a few Polish pilots around, because they flew for the RAF during well, the Second World War. I didn't grow up during the war. No, no, but I mean, it was shortly after the war, wasn't it? No, it, it wasn't. Was mid-50s. No, it was not. Yeah, it was, yeah. No, it wasn't. That's when you were born. I was born in 1960. Yeah, well, you know what I mean. I'm not the so one that pretends to be younger than I am. No, no, I'm no, completely no. happy to no. admit my age. No, no, what age are you? 
It doesn't matter Actually, how you old won't, I am. You won't admit how old you are. I'm not, it doesn't matter. The audience are not interested in how old yeah, I they am. Are. People no, are always no, no. asking me how old you really are. It's the of experience of life, isn't it, and all that. In fact, funny enough, I saw a senior executive from this company the other day... Did you? ...who knew how old I was. Did you run into him in the street? God, he said, you look so much younger than you really are. You have so much energy. Was he on his way to the opticians? So much invigoration. No, 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 no. Now, this is what I want to tell you, right? So it was a bladderation you No, it wasn't about. a bladderation at all, but I'm going to talk to you now about bladderation, yeah, OK? What these doctors did is they decided 21 units a week is the premium level of... Uh, and that's 21 small glasses of wine, right? Uh, it's 21 measures of um, spirits, 21 small glasses of wine, yeah. or 10 and a half pints of beer. And how many of those... Is it something like 20 uh, small measures of wine in a, in a glass or something No, like in a glass there's... Uh, in, in a bottle, rather? No, in a bottle there's... No, 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 there's only six in a bottle. And, what, uh, six small measures? Yes, six small measures really? and four large measures. Yes, okay. absolutely. All right. right, now, let me tell you this. What they did is quite interesting, this. they One of them decided to binge drink on a Saturday night, mm. take all 21 units yeah. by drinking beer, then wine, then spirits, OK? All right. The other one drunk three units a day over seven days. OK, so that's for... So I'm just trying to get this in perspective. Yes. So that's three and a bit bottles of wine, in, uh, in effect, right? What, 21 units? 21 units? Yes, it is, yes. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Okay. But but what I found most interesting was, I found out for the first time ever, Mm. the stages of inebriation, or in my case, bladderation, that you go through if you go on a bender. Okay. And I usually go on benders rather than drink three units a day. Ah. I mean, I won't have a drink now probably until... Friday or Saturday, having not what? had a drink since Sunday. You won't have a drink all week. No, I doubt it very much really? indeed. Doubt it very much indeed. I find that staggering. But listen to the listen to the um, the levels and stages of bladderation, which I found incredibly interesting. Yeah. Right, drunkenness uh, has a number of stages. First of all, the verbose, then the grandiose, right, then the amicose. That's at the stage when you start saying to the person you're with, "You are my best friend," you yeah. know. Right. Then the bellicose. Then the morose. Right. Does everything end in OSE? Yes, it does, yeah. yeah. Then the lacrimose, mm. and that's when you start bursting into tears. Oh, yeah. Well, that's never happened to me. So no. I presume I've, I've never, never seen you doing that. So I presume you never got to the lacrimose stage. And then you get to the stuporose. Uh-huh. Seriously, I didn't know that was a word. Ser- it's a serious condition, the Is stuporose. It? Right. And that's known as the incoherent stage, oh, yeah. when, um, when none of your speech makes sense. Yeah. And finally, <laughs> when you've had it, the comatose. Oh yes. When you're out. Yeah. You're out. You're gone. And and it goes. You go from. Well, being... maybe you've just bypassed a couple of those and gone straight to comatose. Well, no. You go basically from being chatty to unconscious via being a, a, a fun person and then a tearful person. Yeah. Okay. Right. And and um, the way you do this is in 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 a one-off session. Mm. You drink. This guy drank sixteen shots of spirits. Right. Um, it's dangerous. Isn't in it? two hours. Yeah. He passed out, but before he did, he was filmed and it showed him doing things like uh, getting wildly angry about his shoelaces because he couldn't tie them up because he was um, uh, inebriated. But surely all these things affect everybody in different ways, don't they? And then spent the final a, a half hour crying inconsolably before literally slipping into unconsciousness. Huh. Now, all I'm saying is... Amateur. Uh, t- uh, precisely. <laughs> that has never happened to me. That has never, ever happened to no, me. No, I haven't ever slipped into unconsciousness. Exactly. Uh, I don't think I've wept uh, unless I'm watching a particularly sad movie. No, I've, ne- well, uh, I've never left. I've, I've certainly never, never got angry, particularly. I'm not an angry drunk. I've never wept um, watching a movie, whether no. I'm drunk or not. Now, the point is, what a lot of people say is that when you go on the binge drink, right, mm. what are you laughing at? <laughs> Nothing. Why, why are you can't laughing? Tell you. What, what do you mean you can't tell me? <laughs> What's this silly little secret? Nothing. I'm not telling you. What is your silly You're little secret? You only get upset. I want to know. My producer was just reminding me of something that happened on Friday night, that was all. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I see. What was going on Friday night? Well, there was a, a, a bit of a drinks party, was, was there not? Really? Which you were okay. able to attend. OK. Which I wasn't able to attend. I I, uh, I, I, I went briefly, actually, because I had a dinner appointment last Friday. Oh, yeah, so... we forgot to talk about that. You went to the Oxo Tower. Yes, I did, yes. You've got to tell us about that. Well, it's very expensive. I know, I told you it would be. It's nearly 400 quid. You didn't even people. go to the restaurant, did you? You went to the brasserie. Oh, yeah, I, I did. What Let's did you see... have, by the way? Um... So lean weird, ham there? weird dishes. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did, yeah. They yeah. had lean ham? Yeah, yeah, they what, did. for a starter? Yes, they did, yes. Yeah, definitely. What um, you have? Because they put all sorts of strange things around it. Yeah, they, they do, yeah, all sorts of stuff. Let me just finish this here. No. Look, uh, if, you go into the, um, if you go into the binge one and then take a rest, yeah. it, it says the idea is by doing this you give your liver a liver holiday. Um, and there's medical evidence to back up the fact that hmm. that helps. A study published in the American Journal of Epidemiology yeah. 
says that drinking on only one to four days a week and taking the liver holiday for the remaining days is better yeah. than daily drinking those three units a I've day. Always, I've always uh, advocated that because right. when I was living in New York, somebody once told me, I think it was a doctor actually, who said if you right. give up drinking for four days, your liver will basically replenish itself. That's right, absolutely. So there you go. That's, a, that's the most scientific study I've ever seen. But I do love the stages of bladderation, don't yeah. you? I'll just tell you again. Bellicose, morose, lacrimose. Well, how many of those things would you say you don't do? Stuporose. Uh, comatose. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't I've do seen you stuporose or comatose. No, no, I don't do any of that. I've seen I've seen you getting a, a little bit kind of jolly, a little bit loud, but not particularly. Yeah, well, that's because uh, I've got a very you know friendly personality. I've never seen you getting angry. No, 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 know, no. I've never actually seen you losing your temper. I don't go around shouting at people when I'm no, drunk. No, no, I don't or, think or you do. Or inebriated, or in bladderation, or whatever. You want to no, call quite. It. Yeah. There's a, the only thing is, there's sometimes a bit of a memory loss, isn't there? Uh, there can be there can be pockets of blankness in the mind. Yeah, blankness of the they mind. They can, but it's sometimes, momentary. Sometimes. Momentary. Sometimes. Anyway, listen, we're going to get asked Porky coming later. We've got loads of tweets. On Rory McIlroy and, right. and, uh, and on uh, Rumpy Pumpy coming Excellent. up as well. Uh, this is Talk Sport. Your least favourite Beatle, isn't it? Well, he's not my least favourite yeah, Beatle. No, you he's... don't like Ringo Starr very much. No, that's uh, completely untrue. Yeah. Of course, I like him. He's a member of the Fab Four. The point is, I think that his contribution to the Beatles was um, very largely static, mm. in the sense that um, you know Lennon, McCartney, obviously, and then later Harrison were, were writing. <laughs> Marvellous songs, <laughs> yeah, that's John Lennon, obviously. Mind you, uh, you used to say, yeah. used to quote from John Lennon, that he's not even the best drummer in the well, Beatles. Well, that was a joke, wasn't yeah. it? And the point is, he, he did a fine job, and, and as John Lennon once said, uh, other men might have been better drummers, <laughs> Ringo was the best people. So yeah. that, that's all. But but listen, uh, I'm, the reason we played that is mm. that I've come across this incredible book. It's called The Soul of an Octopus, OK? Right. And um, it's written by somebody called Simon Montgomery. And th- it, it's, it's about a woman who um, actually um, thinks octopuses are the closest thing octopi. we have. Is it octopi? No, it's octopuses. Are you sure it's not yeah. octopi? No, 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 I've checked it out. It's octopuses. I think it's octopi. It's not octopi, you I'm fool. I'm sure it is. I'm telling you, it's octopuses. The plural of octopus is octopi. It's not. Anyway, right. the point is, an octopus, mm. is, according to this lady, yeah. is the clo- closest thing in the animal world, in, 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 of any animal, including yeah. chimps and monkeys, to a human being. Haven't they got eight hearts or something, octopus? Uh, as no, well. I'll tell you what it's got. The octopus has got three hearts. Three hearts. So it, if you had one a third of an octopus's heart as well, yeah. it's still got one heart. Yeah, well, I'd, I'd have one heart. That'd You're absolutely right, yeah. Um, as you know, only one third of my heart works. Yeah, I've heard that. The octopus, three hearts and a brain that wraps around the throat. Their blood what? is a brain. The brain is it's not like a, a you know a ball yeah. like our brains. Right. It, it's it's uh, it's part of the whole like head. Like a donut. It's like it's a donut. The whole head. Re- yeah, wraps wraps around um, the neck. Mm. Yeah, did I say the neck or not? Has it got a neck and octopus? Uh, wraps around the throat. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Now the blood is blue, not red, because it's made of copper, not iron, and that's what carries the oxygen. Okay. Right. Now how about this? Uh, octopuses or an octopus. Is so bright mm. they can eat Brussels sprouts because they like them. Right, they, you chuck a Brussels. Where would sprout. they find Brussels sprouts under well, the sea? I, I don't know, but if you chuck them into a, if there were an octopus in a fish tank and you chuck <laughs> Brussels sprouts in, they they, they do love Brussels what sprouts. Would you throw Brussels sprouts at an octopus? Because it's been found they like them. So you you know if you had a what pet a ludicrous octopus, study. if you had a pet octopus, you'd feed it Brussels sprouts. Right. Now also, if you gave an octopus a this is absolutely true a bottle of <laughs> pills with a child safety cap on the octopus could uh, could crack the yeah. code well he might need them after eating all those brussels sprouts i suppose don't be ridiculous they 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 can they can unscrew the caps of child proof medicine bottles they can undo supposedly octopus proof well, locks they've got eight tentacles and they're master escapologists I'm not many surprised. here many in aquariums <laughs> yeah many in aqua- what are you? What's, well, what's your problem? Master escapologists. Yeah. They've they got are. eight tentacles. Well, this is what I'm telling you. Well, there's loads of things they could do. Here They'd are. be pretty good at basketball, I suppose. Here, as well. here, here, listen. Many an aquarium staff members come into work the following morning to find an octopus gasping on the floor, having made a Houdini-like escape from their tank. This is something to do well, with they're extraordinary. Probably after the Brussels sprouts in the oven. It, it's, it's something to do with their extraordinary brains. The average octopus well, has can't around. Be that bright if here, they throw themselves out of the tank and nearly die. Here, listen, listen. The average octopus has around 300 million neurons. The cells principally responsible for the brain's processing capabilities. Mm. A rat, by comparison, has only 200 million. A what? And a frog, 16 million. And a pond snail, 11 million. But they've got 300 million. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. I like the taste of octopus. I must say, octopuses can think really uh, well. And they also have incredible powers of touch. 
Um, well, be- you can't get them off your hand. Have you ever seen, uh, if you go to one of those Mediterranean countries where they eat a lot of octopus, right. and the guys who actually go fishing for them mm. will quite often come in out of the sea, and the octopus is wrapped around their arm. And what, you live? Yeah, live, yeah. Ooh, because the best thing you can do with an octopus is to beat it to death against the stone of yeah. the harbour uh, while me. it's still alive. And then that sort of pulverises the flesh, which means that it's then soft enough to cook and eat. It's very oh, nice. It's horrible. What do you because, mean it's horrible? Well, because... Um, Have you uh, ever eaten octopus? No. Why not? I don't... I wouldn't, because I, I certainly won't what about now. about squid? No. But I certainly won't now, because look how human they I are. I think I might cook it up with some sprouts. Oh, no, no, no. Look how no, human they are. Happy. Right, octopus. an octopus is a very trusting creature when greeted by familiar aquarium staff, suspicious when meeting visitors. They play games... <laughs> Why are you telling me all this? Uh, because this is so fascinating. <laughs> they play games using their jets to shoot water at newcomers yeah. or bounce buoyant objects in their tanks. Mm. They also suffer senescence as they age, shrinking in size and growing seemingly absent-minded and confused like a human being. Really? They also feel intense stress mm. uh, if they, you know, if their pals are taken out of the same tank that they're in. They don't like it. But I mean, the they're hand, just amazing creatures. Well, I, I accept that they may be amazing creatures. Yeah. But on the other hand, this study seems to have taken place entirely on octopus or octopi uh, in captivity in a tank, and where yeah. they may behave completely differently from the way they would normally behave under the sea in their own cave. Yeah. Because they normally live in caves, don't they? Uh, what do? Octopus. What do you mean, what? We're talking about octopus. No, no, they don't live in caves. They live in gardens. That's why I play octopuses' gardens. gardens. Look, well, Ringo Starr Ringo Star met a fisherman in Portugal, yeah. and he was talking this to... This when he was high on LSD. No, 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 not at all. They live in gardens. They live in a cave. They live in gardens. and Rubbish. And, 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 the, and the, the fisherman told Ringo Starr mm. the amazing life of octopuses, they have their own gardens. So even if they live in a cave, like yeah. you're saying, a little underground cave... Well, they like to they, hide in a cave because that's how they can get their prey because they, they, they can't be seen. They make a garden outside their cave and they, they you know, they put little rocks in and all that kind of stuff, honestly. Really? Um, and, and just to keep... So what is the purpose of you telling me all this to say that these are the most intelligent creatures on Earth apart from uh, the humans, then? Well, what I've just discovered is, I, you know, and I think it's a, it's a, it's a life-revealing um, thing... Yeah. ..that... An octopus is an amazingly sensitive creature. It's mm. amazing like a human being. It has human feelings. Here, are, what, about, what about this? Um, uh, one of the octopuses called Athena in this experiment yeah. is very affectionate, playing games of tug and war with his little octopus pals and rising to the tank... Well, they'd be good at that with the eight tentacles, wouldn't they? Yeah, to allow Montgomery, that's his pal, to stroke her. Um, meanwhile, other octopuses lift their heads, rise out of the water, they give visitors a really good look before they uh, agree to welcome them with a squirt of water from one of their uh, tentacles. I mean, it's just amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And I didn't know anything about it, and now I feel absolutely... Uh, awe, in awe, in awe of an octopus. And I always regarded octopus eyes, uh, octopuses... Octopus eyes. Oct- octopuses as um, creatures which should be feared, really, because they look so horrible. Yeah, but they don't, but, I don't but, fear octopus. But, in fact, they're fantastic. Well, they they're very, they taste very good, is what I would say. Well, I, I, I would, think that's a horrible thing I would, to say. I would uh, encourage you to try and taste some of them and eat some of them. No, in no. Fact, I'll make you some octopus. No, no, I, th- I, I think that's an absolute terrible thing to say. I, I think it's a, it's a fantastic revelation, that. Another revelation I found out this week, by the way... Is that if Can I got... read you a couple of tweets before your next oh, revelation? Oh, yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, go on. Uh, Here's one yeah. from Dan, who says, Ask Porky about Murray's, Andy Murray, that is, Andy Murray's record since getting married, or Tiger Woods yes. since his divorce, hashtag nonsense, yes. uh, which we talked about before. Sean says, Rory's poor form was due to him changing to Nike golf equipment. Once he was comfortable with the new clubs, he mm. started winning. Uh, a good one from Adam, who says, Lindsay Vonn's relationship went downhill very quickly. Who's? Lindsay Vonn. She's Tiger Woods' ex-girlfriend. Uh, the downhill skier. Oh, yes, 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 yes. You didn't know that, did you? And uh, one, of from, I uh, one from Becky. So that explains men. Mm. Uh, to keep being successful, you need to behave with the morals of an alley cat. No grumpy, pumpy, well, low output. In a way, in a way, I suppose you do, yeah. In a way, I suppose you do. And Trevor but, says, Porky should have done a similar analysis for the lovely Ms Wozniacki as a comparison. Mm. Well, how well has she been doing since the breakup? Well, she hasn't been winning things, has she? Because if she, if she had, we'd be reading about it because we keep up right up to the, uh, you know, to the brink on the... Uh, on the breaking news in both the sports uh, news and current affairs world. Yes. And we haven't seen anything to, to say that, have we? Well, she wasn't winning that much when she was uh, with the Rory either, was she? Well, the amazing thing was she became world number one, but she's never won a Grand Slam, has mm. she? No, I don't think she has. No, exactly. Paul says this. Mm. Um, Porky just gets other people angry when he's drunk. Hashtag angry mob with pool cues. Uh, Remember well, that story? Well, yes, I do, but that wasn't really my fault. I tell you what, talking about getting angry, Mike... Um, 
Uh, remember, I'm not sure if you were there, but I was, the Waco siege. I wasn't they, there, no. When they set fire to um, the... It was the uh, da- Davidian... Uh, um, the Branch co- Davidian. The Branch yeah. Davidian. That, mm. They set fire and, like, dozens of people died. Yeah. You've seen what happened in Waco in the last few days? What, the biker thing? All these bikers yeah. got there. How many are dead? 13? Something like that, Something yeah. like that, all blown um, away. Suddenly... Apparently it's 170 people about to be charged with murder. Yeah, well, suddenly, you know, yeah. about, charged with, with organised crime activity. And murder, yeah. apparently. But suddenly they've discovered that all these people who are mm. running biker gangs in uh, in that part of Texas are running organised crime as well. It's yeah. extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely extraordinary, yeah. Just like Sons of Anarchy. Have you ever watched that show? Sons of Anarchy, no. Yeah. No, okay. no, I don't think about that. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Loads more coming up. On digital radio and 1089 and 1053 AM, Talk Sport. And he is right. He is always right. But in this case, particularly right. I have said to you that you are the best fans of the world, but I was tonight a little bit disappointed. Yeah, and I shall say why. I have seen a lady who plays the saxophone fantastically. Give her a big applause. The saxophone? That was well, the saxophone. The, the, sounds like something you would use. I tell you what, honestly. You got the saxophone sounded, and your girlfriend on the saxophone. It sounded like he was very relaxed there, didn't he? That was the very uh, relaxed. United end of uh, dinner, uh, end, end of season, end of season dinner, dinner yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And, and good, because I think the boss has to uh, let his hair down occasionally. You don't but, think there's any sign of bladderation there, do you? Uh, well, that's a glass of red wine. It's well, been said. I, uh, you know, that, that, we have to say alleged bladderation. Well, if, I'm, if I'm, not, I'm, well yeah. I'm not saying he's done anything wrong. No, 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 I'm not either. I, I don't mind people who have a drink. But it reminds me of a song that uh, we used to sing up in the North East when oh, yeah. I worked on the evening paper up there. Uh-huh. <laughs> you know, it's called uh, The Music Man. You know, I can play the sexy phone, the sexy phone, the sexy phone. I can play the sexy phone, the sexy, sexy phone. Is it not like I, the saxophone? Um, no, no, it's the sexy phone. Sexy the whole phone. idea is, you know... Is that I, what you think he was singing then? Well, you no, might have been referring no, to no, that. no, he's Dutch. He wouldn't know this song. It's called The Music Man. Yeah. And, and the next, word, uh, next verse goes... I am the music man, I come from down your way. I am the music man and I can play. I can play the violin, oh, the yeah, violin. I have seen this. It's one of those, it's kind of one of those appalling kind of things you see on one of those awful holidays. Yeah, it? it is, and it just goes on and on for different... Uh, I can play the... Triangle, the triangle, the triangle, all that kind of stuff. Right. You know what I mean? Now, Sexy phone, triangle, violin, uh, piccolo. That's the one. I can play the piccolo, the piccolo, the piccolo. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favourite. OK. Now, there's <laughs> the loads piccolo. of interesting things coming in, by the way, on, right. uh, on the uh, subject of octopus, octopi. OK. Some people are saying there's many different plurals that you could actually use. Uh, here's mm. one from, uh, uh, where are we? Um, uh, Mardi, who says, octopi should not be used. Once again, Porky is right. I Thank think you. this is his week. I believe he'll have eight out of ten <laughs> on the me. quiz this Friday. Uh, Dash has sent us in a very nice picture of an octopi, uh, which is actually... Oh. Uh, um, no, it's just a pastry octopi. Oh, I see. I thought, God, I thought I was a real Somebody's made like a blueberry pie. To eat. Um, mm. And then here's one from, uh, here's one from uh, Becky who says, thank God I hate Brussels sprouts. I now a note at Christmas to nip down to the aquarium mm. and dump them in the octopus That's tank. right, yeah. Um, yeah. And Kevin says there are three plural forms of octopus, octopuses, octopodes and octopi. Uh, mm. Octopi is often objectionable. Yeah, I don't I, know whether I, that means objectionable, I, as in I, uh, I, you know, not pleasant. I don't think that's the case. Uh, where would you find Brussels sprouts in an octopus's roof garden? According to Old Porky, says Andrew and Adrian here. Very cruel one. Uh, hi guys, uh, I'm not sure MG about Ringo being on LSD, but it definitely sounds like Old Porky yes. uh, is By certainly the way, I on some mind-bending substance. I understand that, that it wasn't a fisherman. Or yeah. around on, it, was, it was the captain of a, of a boat that he was on that well, told Ringo. Well, he's uh, a fisherman. Uh, well, it was Peter Sellers' boat, apparently. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a guy who's uh, associated with the sea, isn't it? A well, he's seafarer. Not the same as a fisherman, is it? Well, he, you associated know. with the sea. Yeah, yeah. Heady says this, guys, you are both right. Octopi refers to the same type of octopus. Mm. Octopuses refers to different types together. I see. Well, there you go. Mm. Uh, so we're both right. You see what I mean? That's fine. And uh, young Mark says, uh, please spell out the words for the uh, levels of drunkenness in drinking excessively. Yeah. I've tried searching on Google for some of those words that Porky just mentioned with no results. Yes. Well, I'm sorry, mate. Get a better dictionary. Now, we've got a Get couple a of good English ones here. One. John Laguna says this. Mr Graham, he says this on a text, 81089. Mm. He says, uh, please let Porky finish his stories. Every time he gets a story going, halfway through, you stop him yes. and ask him if he's seen the time. Yes. He doesn't speak much sense, and when he does, you stop him. I think that's very unfair. 
Yeah, I the only time I say have you seen the time is when we have to break. Yes, exactly. And Another I, one from someone you... here who says, I'm a non-identical twin, but thankfully I look nothing like my brother. Really? Well, that's uh, that's that's a bit, bit harsh, isn't it? Um, and Dash here says, excellent breakdown on the levels of inebriation, Mr Parry. You didn't get as far as staggery. No. No, that's absolutely true. We didn't. Uh, Ian, the Sainsbury's driver, says, Mike, if an octopus has a garden, does it grow its sprouts in a raised bed? Well, of course not. But, I mean, the point is, for someone who reads it, likes uh, sprouts. Also, when an octopus... This is another fact about octopus, because yeah. I read the book. Uh, is uh, What was the book called? Uh, uh, the book was called... Hang on, hang on. I'll find out what the book's called. It was called The Soul of an Octopus yeah, right. by a guy called Cy... Sorry. Octopus have got soul then as well. Montgomery. And it's, it's published by my publisher, Simon and Schuster. You know? Your publisher? My publisher, yeah. Have you got another um, book coming out anytime soon? Uh, maybe, maybe. Really? Can't say too much about it's it. Simon and Schuster? Yeah, maybe, maybe. Maybe, maybe um, you can have a word with them and see if they'd like to publish one of my books. No. Since you've got yourself a good connection. No, nobody wants to publish one of your books. Why not? Because they're utter trash. No, they're very entertaining, actually. Yeah, rubbish. Entertaining you, you and cl- engaging. You claim you've written two or three books, but of course they've never been published. Frederick cause... Forsyth's agent called What's... it entertaining and engaging. Oh, and who you know. published it? Nobody published Nobody it after published. that because I got a job and I didn't bother hawking it's it around. Trash could have been written by a five-year-old. Yeah, it didn't, uh, have, it didn't have the fine uh, descriptive yeah. nature of some of your no, books. No, no, that's to exa- say. exactly right. In fact, I've got an Ask Porky mm. that's not going to make it. Oh yeah, uh, where somebody was asking for recommendations for ski resorts where the sky yes. was inky black and yes. the snow was as white as a tin of Dulux paint. Mirabelle. Yeah. Um, now, what I was going to say was, an octopus when it gets stressed out and it feels under pressure emits an odour like chrysanthemums. Does it? Yeah. Well, underwater? That, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But, I mean, it rises to the surface right. and all that kind of stuff. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. Well, I mean, amazing. all of the creatures in the sea, yeah. and uh, many of them on the land, are fascinating. Yeah, I mean, now, if you ever watch any of those undersea kind of shows, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. there was one actually on mm. last week, I think, about whales, Yeah, um, which was fascinating. A, a documentary on whales? Yes. Yes, I like documentaries on whales. Did you see the one that was on last week? No. Oh. What was it about? Whales. Yes, I know, but... oh, oh. <laughs> So, sorry, so you're not talking about like Prestatin. You're talking no, about no. I'm talking about whales. whales. I'm talking about under whales, the sea. Whales, you're not okay. listening at all. I am listening. You're so busy was, coming I, up with your next no. crappy report. No, no, some, no, you know, no, no, no. Cobblers no, no. no. What I was going to say was what I was going to say what was, was it about talking about animals. Talking about animals, mm. right? Now you've got a dog, right? I bet you didn't know that having a dog hmm. might inadvertently have saved your sight a number of times over the years. Saved because, my sight. Yeah, dogs carry some sort of like um, thing. Uh, about them, right? Like what you call it? Um, what, like an aura? No, no, no. Something physical what, which some stops of... glaucoma in human beings. Oh, is that right? Yeah, it does. Honestly. Well, how do you get get it from the dog into your eyes, though? I don't know. It comes off its skin or something. But but the op- it, it's the opposite with cats. Oh yeah, cats. Uh, cats can, are evil, aren't they? Yeah, cats are evil in my view, but cats also, I found out from this research, can cause blindness. Yeah. So if you have a cat, you can get blindness. If you have a dog, a dog, it, it emits something, a dog, which... Oh, no, I know what it is. The dog can spot glaucoma yeah. very, very early on in, in, in a human being, you know, from the... You know, it, it can smell the sort of cancerous thing in your eye or something mm. like that, and, uh, and can well, alert. Can, and what does it tell you, though? It can't talk, can it? No, but it, it, I don't know, maybe licks your eyes or something like that. <laughs> no, no, that's what dogs do. That's what dogs do. I know what dogs do. I've got a dog. Yeah, you know, when they want to get uh, um, a message across, they uh, they make it clear, don't they? Mm. Um, yeah, it, but, it can. I mean, communication between man and dog is all very well. Yes. But sometimes, you know, like, for example, I know when uh, when he wants to go outside, I know when are. he wants to go for a walk, I know when he's trying to get my attention, but I wouldn't necessarily know when he was telling me you might have glaucoma. Yeah, well, no, but you'd guess something was wrong and you'd go and check it out. Here it is. This is what it is. Well, what am I going to do? Go down to the opticians and go, look, excuse me, I've been talking to my dog and he thinks I've got glaucoma. Well, why not? Because you should always get why your not? eyes tested anyway. Yeah, definitely. Right. Here are Dr David Allenby, uh, British eye surgeon. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I just said you've been feeling rough. <laughs> what? Sorry. Oh, think... you mean rough. Rough, rough. yeah. Rough. Yeah, that's a very good joke, yeah. Um, I thought it was quite funny. He says the protective effect of dogs could be because they spend more time outdoors and are happy to get dirty, whereas cats are cleaner animals. Mm. We know that exposure to dogs and the germs that dogs carry and the bacteria they accumulate can be good for the immune system in a human being. Really? And that seems to spread to the eyes. Isn't that amazing? Well, it it kind of is amazing, but Mm. but kind of not amazing, really. Uh, Here's one from Chris. What level of bladderation is singing Maggie May at the Christmas party? 
Well, that's just jovial. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, so a, that's jovial a jovial state. Bit, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's no problem at all. Mm. Um, uh, Ibiza, Ibiza DJ Brizey says, Porky's a right plank. The music man has no mention of saxophone, piccolo or violin in it. It's piano, trombone, bagpipes, dam busters. Oh, no, I don't think so. Uh, do you put, I uh, think I've heard a version with piccolo in it. Yeah, of course you can. You can put anything you, can put you, anything like. you like. Hey, you? by the way, I saw something the other day about... Um, Loads of good cars getting nicked, so you've got no uh, problem. Don't worry about yours. You know. <laughs> well, they're not going to nick yours, are they? Yours is getting on the old side now, isn't it? It's getting changed very Nearly soon. three years old. Fact, is it a three-year lease? No, 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 not at all, no. It's, uh, it's, not, not, two at years. All. it's not two years old yet. Isn't it? No, but I've decided... I'm sure you've I've had decided... it for more than a year. No, I haven't. Uh, yeah, well, I have, yeah, but it's not two years old yet. Oh, OK. And I'm getting it changed, and hey. I've, uh, I've been sorting out a new model today. Have you? Yes, I have, yes. Can you reveal uh, where you've been? Um, it's, uh, it's a... It's Does a... it begin with J? No, no, it's a sports model. A sports model. Two doors. All right. Coupe. Does it begin with J? No, I'm not getting another Jaguar. Does it begin with M? Uh, yes, it does, yes. It does begin with M. And it's a two door sports coupe. Is it a similar make to the one you've got now? No, it's bigger. Bigger. But it's the same make, though? Uh, no, it's a, it, it, uh, yes, it's a Mercedes, yeah. and it's, but it's a sports coupe. Oh, right. It's got Has like, it got a soft top? No, I didn't want a soft top. Is it a CLK? Uh, I can't tell you that because I don't know. Okay, but it's got like um, special paint. It's like uh, metallic. Yes, it's a lovely metallic sort of what uh, color? Silver blue. Silver blue. Yeah, I like silver Ooh. blue. Yeah, yeah. No, I like that. I, I had like, when I had my Merc, it was mm. diamond black, which was brilliant. Diamond when the sun black. shone yeah. on it in a certain yeah. way. It looked like purple. I agree, but I, I had a black Merc one, a black uh, Jag one, so I, I wasn't all that keen because black cars show up the dirt so much. But uh, anyway, look, what I was going to so say to you So when are you going to take delivery of this new chariot, then? Well, I'm, I'm, it? I'm still uh, negotiating it. Hmm. But what I was going to say to you was, I... Is there any merit, by the way, hmm. in getting... You know when they bring out the new uh, registration yes. at the end of March? Yes. And then they bring out another one in September? November, I think it is. Or November, yeah. October, I mean, yeah. Have you got a view on whether it's better to get one... At the early part of the year or the later part of the year? It doesn't bother me, to be honest. No matter. Don't bother driving around on a number plate. Honestly, it doesn't bother me at all. Okay. I just wonder for, like, you know, if you the, were going to resell what's it. What's quite interesting is the new model I will get is a new, new model, if you see what I mean. It's, it's a redesigned. Yes. It's the latest update, right. if you see what I mean. Right. So it's good. But listen, I'll tell you what I saw. No joke, because I was, you know, doing a bit of research on cars today. Yeah. Uh, I mean, really expensive cars now. You know, I said to you once in jest mm. that I would get a revolving number plate, James Bond style, yes. so that when I went through yeah. a, a speed camera... And then camera... Do you remember somebody tweeted us the link yeah. to some place in America where you can actually get it? Yeah, but the thing is, crooks in this country are now genuinely doing that. Are they? So that when they nick a car and drive yeah. off to the coast to get it on board a, you know, a ferry to yeah. cross it over to Take the it continent, to or yeah. it's, it's got different number plates yeah. at every... St- camera it goes past. Oh, you see really? what I mean? That's interesting. And they deliberately speed sometimes mm. to get caught by a camera to put the authorities off the trail mm. and say, well, the car couldn't have gone that way because we haven't picked it up. You yeah, see what right. I mean? Isn't yeah. that amazing? That is. It's West Stonchi, How about this it? for two number plates I saw in a walk yesterday yeah. across um, Stockbroker Belt, Surrey? No yeah. joke, right? I saw a black Aston Martin mm. parked outside, you know, quite a modest sort of four-bedroom home. Yeah. And part of the registration number of that black Aston Martin was 007. Was it? Yeah. Mm. I don't want to set it up what the rest of the number is, no. because obviously... You identify that, the owner. part of it was 007. That's yeah. incredible. But the other one was the most beautiful red Ferrari. Yeah. Do you know, I would love a red Ferrari, but on principle... You would look ridiculous in a Ferrari. On principle, I can't... No, you would look no, stupidly on ridiculous principle, in a I'd never have a red car, because I don't... You know, You'd never have a red car? I'd never have a red car. Well, you should never get a red Ferrari. Oh, anyway. no, no, it's the only colour to get for no, a Ferrari. It's not. It is. What no. do you think is a good colour for a Ferrari? I think, I mean, a red red Ferrari is the most ostentatious car you can drive around. I think around it's the most beautiful car and in the world. And if you don't look like David Ginola, I yeah. would say don't bother. Yeah, well, right? you're probably right. But anyway, do I you would know... get a black one if I was going to get one. Uh, I wouldn't want a Ferrari anyway. I'd probably get a silver one. But um, do you know what the red You just said red was, was the only colour to get it in. Well, I think, I do honestly think a purist who says I'm going to get myself a Ferrari would have to have a red one. It's the, it's the only colour, and I just don't suit red. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know what the registration number was? What? Whoosh. Whoosh? Whoosh. I oh, like that thing you say before you go to sleep. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Mm. By the way, I've had a few... Um... I bet the guy that drives that's a right plank, though. It, it, uh, the registration hey. number was whoosh. I can't tell you exactly how it's spelled, because, again, you don't want to give it away, but it was clearly, you know, that's, that's, how, it's, uh, that's how it looked... You looked at it and you thought, yeah. wow, that says whoosh. See, that, for me, is a good enough reason not to live in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey. Well, I, I don't think, think I'd I be think able to stop myself from vandalising I, cars I, like that. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Now, how about me. this? Uh, yeah, this is on. the tweet of the hour so far okay. from Matt, and I'll try and do it in the right accent. OK. What's that, Lassie? I've got glaucoma. Thank you for telling me. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'd better go to the doctors and get it sorted out. Yeah, well, that's, that's true, you see. You, you know, you mock all these things because your <laughs> your knowledge and your intelligence is so way below mine. Mm. When I tell you something extraordinary, mm. you know, you, you, you think, oh, I didn't know that, but Porky did, I better mock him. Yeah. yeah. Here's one from Mern, uh, the uh, Mem, rather, Luton and Gooner. The octopus mm. may be intelligent with human mm. emotions, but they are also cannibals. They eat each other. Well, I don't think there's any nice, is that. Uh, and Naomi mm. says, stop rubbishing cats, Parry. They are wise and wonderful pets. I've had them all my life and they enrich your life. I think they're evil. For extra time, there will be a Two Mikes podcast coming out a little bit later on, of course. And you should also go and visit uh, thetwomikes.co.uk uh, for all sorts of stuff. There's some porky quizzes on there, uh, as well as uh, all the information on the live shows that we're doing yes. in Portsmouth, in London, yes. in Manchester and in Newcastle That's right. uh, as well, which we're very much looking forward to. Now, here's one from uh, Gaz, yeah. uh, who says, uh, oh, no, that's an Ask Porky about good places to drink near Wembley on Saturday yes. evening after watching Southend United getting promoted. We won't worry about that one. No. Here's a good one from Fasher, mm-hmm. uh, who says, did you ever see your identical twin? doctors together. Maybe it was the same doctor getting paid twice. Yeah. Actually, I did see them together. It was quite yeah. unnerving sometimes. In the, in the same room. Yeah, and mm. here's one from uh, Dr B. Chipster uh, who says, my dog always lets me know when my bladderation reaches the glaucomatose stage. OK, That's yeah. Well, clever, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very, very happy to hear about it. Yeah. Now, um, I want to talk to you about, about, about Teddy Sheringham. Oh, yeah. Now, Teddy Sheringham, right, uh, it is rumoured... Um, a few of the papers are speculating on it, but I've seen it on the telly as well, that he might go to Stevenage as the new manager. Yes, that was an interesting now, development. Now, now, this is brilliant. Mm. It's, it's brilliant. I'll tell you why it's brilliant. Go on, why? Be- because um, I think anybody who starts in management in professional football has to start at the bottom, not yeah. the top. Right. And whenever a manager tries to start at the top, it just doesn't work. Well, are you referring to Chris Ramsey, maybe, at QPR? No, Chris Ramsey's doing a fine job, and I'm glad he's well, been... he's doing a fine job? He's got relegated. I know, but he took over the team halfway through the season. But well, he's, yeah, but you wouldn't call it doing a fine job, would I you? think he, he has great presence, Chris Ramsey, and he comes over very well, and he's got a three-year extension, hasn't he, to yeah. his contract. Great. No, what I'm saying is, the Tony Adams routine... Yeah. Well, Tony Adams was, you know, Britain's uh, best centre-half for mm. 30 years. Right. Therefore, he must make a great didn't manager. He out to Uzbekistan or somewhere, didn't he? Uh, Tony Adams was a hopeless manager yeah. in this country, I'm afraid. Is he not part of some consortium, though, now, trying to buy, um, is it Aston Villa? Could be, I don't know. I heard, thought I heard that But, week. but uh, I remember when he was appointed at Portsmouth, right, and, mm. he, and he'd already failed at um, some middle-rated club. Uh-huh. Like, where was it? I can't remember now. Was it Milton Keynes or Walsall or somewhere like that? Anyway, but um, he failed anyway. Well, MK Dons are in the Championship now, aren't they? Uh, MK Dons are in the Championship. This was many years ago. Yeah, yeah. But, he, he, you know, Portsmouth is still in the, um, in the Premier League, believe mm. it or not. And, right. and he came, I remember being down there, and I went over to see them. And and he actually, you know, put a three piece suit on. I always say the manager who puts on a three piece suit is, for some unknown reason, a bit above his station. You You've know. got a funny thing about waistcoats, though, haven't you? Well, You're well, not keen I, on waistcoats. Well, I saw Nigel Pearson yesterday being interviewed for the yeah. first time ever. Now, there's a guy who's done a great job, regardless yeah. oh, of all yeah. the things Brilliant we've said job, about yeah. him. He's yeah. done yeah. an incredible job. But without a tracksuit on, he, he had a three piece suit on, it, like a tweed uh, with, a, with a waistcoat. Right. You know, I find it's very well, why odd. Why are you so against waistcoats? Well, Did you never I have a three piece suit? Yeah, I did, yeah. You but must have had. Yeah, but I think waistcoats are so prissy, you know what I mean? Mm. I don't know why anybody wears a waistcoat in this day and age. I think they look a bit odd. But anyway, the uh, the point of my story is... What is the point of your story? Uh, Teddy Sheringham is going to start at the bottom with yeah. Stevenage. Now, Stevenage... Well, he's been at West Ham, hasn't he? Yeah, but as a coach. Yeah. But he's going there as manager, I'm right. saying, to Stevenage. And I think that's a brilliant thing to well, do. Well, you've got connections right. to Stevenage, haven't you? Well, of course. They uh, love me at Stevenage. Did you not go up there and take a penalty? Well... Not really take a penalty, yeah. but attempt to take a penalty. Yeah, penalty shootout thing. It's a very at bizarre uh, clobber, as I seem to recall. No, it was an Everton. No, you had strip. ridiculously long shorts on. I seem to remember. Yeah, well, the Everton strip. It was Everton no, strip from the Everton like, kit the, man. The shorts were really long. Well, you know, they must have been a pair of shorts destined for a tall person. Yeah, right. You know, I'm, I'm not over tall. Over tall, um, no. Yeah, so that was it. And uh, and yes, they love you now, Stevenage. I was warmly welcomed. So have your stuff. contacts at Stevenage told you that this is going to happen? Then? Well, I think it's going to happen. Really? It's going to happen. Now the point is. Brian Clough always said the best way to learn about management is on your hands and knees when you're scrubbing the dressing room floor, which is what he did. Yeah, I do believe that, yeah. I don't think, you know, when Tony Adams... I mean, what about Pep Guardiola? He did pretty well when he started out, Yeah, didn't he? Yeah, but he came right through the system with that club. Um, uh, what I'm saying about Tony Adams is he, uh, he said, quite conceitedly, my time has come hmm. when he was unveiled as the new Portsmouth manager. He asked for 16 games, and that was it. <laughs> no, seriously. It's kind of sad, but comical It way, is sad. It? Now, you know, what, you know what the answer is to this, don't what you? What is it? The better the player is... Hmm the less likely he's going to be to be a great manager. Yeah. Do you know why? Well, Jose Mourinho is the epitome of that, isn't Do you he? know why? Why? 
I'll tell you why. Go on. A great footballer like Glenn Hoddle, for instance, yes. or maybe even Kenny Dalgleish, mm-hmm. who, of course, did have a track record. How about Gianfranco Zola, maybe? Gianfranco Zola is yeah. a very good example. Yeah. The better the footballer they are, the less they have to think about what they're doing mm. with the ball. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do. It comes instinctively. Yeah. Whereas, and they can't understand. If you're that good at something, yeah. you can't understand why nobody else is. Glenn Hoddle could never understand why players just couldn't take free kicks the way he wanted them taken yeah. and used to demonstrate to them himself how to put a ball over a, you know, a, a, wall, uh, yeah. a wall and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Mm. Now, what I'm saying is, if you're somewhat of a, what could you say, a workman-like journeyman, footballer, yeah. a journeyman, mm. a, a clogger or yeah. something like that, you think a lot more about the game. Yeah. You think about... Well, wouldn't that apply to Tony Adams, though? No, because Tony, no, Tony Adams was, was excellent at what he did. Yeah. John Terry's excellent at what he, yeah. he does. I'm not sure John Terry will make a great manager because mm. he's good at what he does and knows how to do it perfectly. Well, there's so much to so, it now, so, isn't there, Same as well. with Stephen Gerrard. But what I'm saying is, a guy who's workmanlike has to think of all sorts of ways to compensate for his lack of skill. Yeah. And so his, his brain, thinking about ways to, to play with uh, the ball, play football, tactically to make himself better, means he does a lot more thinking about the game. Mm. And that's why most of the top managers, I mean, run through, them. So Alex Ferguson yeah. wasn't a great footballer. Arsene Wenger, not a great footballer. Mm. Sven Horan Eriksson, not a great footballer. Jose Mourinho, not a great footballer. What Davey about Moyes, Hal? Not a great footballer. Louis van Hal wasn't a great footballer. He was all right. Mm. He was all right. A lot of those Dutch players, you know, went into management, including uh um Night and morning, we drink warnings, warnings, <laughs> advocate. You're always going to do that, aren't you? Yeah, exactly. I hope he's not he's in, the, in the Premier League his next career. season. He's thinking extending his contract now. What about Steve Bruce? Steve, Where would you put him? Steve Bruce. He was a pretty good footballer for Manchester United. He was very good indeed. He, he, was, he sometimes said to be, isn't he, the best footballer who never got an England cap? Because mm. he didn't, even though he led Manchester United to titles and doubles and all sorts of things. But Steve Bruce has had a, a successful managerial career, but not a brilliant one, hasn't he? Well, I suppose you could say that. I mean, yeah. he's managed a lot of teams that have struggled. There's no doubt about yes, that. That's what right. about Kenny Dalgleish? He kind of breaks the mould, doesn't he? Well, n- not really. And I'll tell you why. Kenny Dalgleish took over in tragic circumstances anyway. Yeah. It was after Hazel. But in his first season, he was... At the end of one season, he was captain of a winning team. Mm. At the start of the next season, he was player-manager of a winning team. But yeah. it was the same team. Yeah. So all he did was say, right, steady as she goes. Yeah. And then won the double right. by scoring the winner at Chelsea in the last game of the season, to my recollection. And probably you might say he was and a better beating, player manager. Beating Everton in the cup final. So you might right? say he was a better player manager than he was a manager. If he was played already. Yeah, so. he was. He was. No, undoubtedly. And what about when he won at Blackburn? Well, that was the very first case, wasn't it, in the Premier League of checkbook um, yes, I management so. by buying a title. Mm. And it and it's, you know, it's happened. But he a still had to manage since. the team though. Oh, of course he did. Of course he did. No, he did a brilliant job, don't get me wrong. Because we've seen, I mean, for example, do you remember yeah. I mean it was a bit of a tragic situation with uh, um, Villanova, the guy who took over from Pep Guardiola at Barcelona. That's right. The team that everybody said, well, anybody could manage that team. I yeah. could go there and manage that team. Yeah. It turned out that that wasn't true. No. That's true. But with Kenny Dalgleish, in his early years of management, any player would have gone and played for him. That's yeah. why Alan Shearer left Southampton and went to Blackburn yeah. instead of going to Manchester United mm. or, or later on he went to Newcastle, of course. Yeah. And, and, and because Dalgleish's aura was enormous. Yeah. Now, the second time he managed Liverpool, that had dissipated a lip. For yeah. obviously, it was 20 years later. So that had dissipated a bit mm. and then he wasn't able to attract the players and also Liverpool had gone down the tubes a bit yeah. compared to what they were the first time round. Okay. But, I mean, yes, I, I totally agree. But generally speaking, the best managers we have in football are not great footballers and the great footballers as you quite rightly say can't understand why people can't do what they mm. did and find it difficult to instill that um, you know that uh, altogether fighting spirit and and uh, camaraderie yes. in their players now I, I as you might have expected yeah. have got a slightly different conclusion to bring you to on the, on the uh, Teddy Sheringham front and that is yes. that I believe that Sheringham has heard that Allardyce is leaving and is therefore jumping ship before he waits to see who's coming in because he might not have a job at West Ham with under a new, under a new manager. Have you seen that story in the back of the mirror well, about uh, they say that Sam Allardyce is definitely leaving West Ham because yeah. he's called in the utility companies to read his meter and canary walk. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a great story, that, because somebody's obviously just found a little fact like that. and uh, Someone's and, obviously told him, haven't they? Yeah, they've Presumably. told him. That's a great story, that, and uh, I like that. And I like the idea that he lives on the 40th floor of a, a building in Canary Wharf. He lives above Mr Brazil. I'm surprised you haven't seen him in Mr Brazil's company. No, he does. He, he lives above oh, the, same the same building. Block, yeah, does he? Same, yeah, it's... Um, can't say which one it is. No, case people don't give it away. Store. Don't give it away. But it's very near to um, West India Quay. <laughs> yes, OK. Yes. Well, if anybody wants to find uh, Mr Allardyce yeah. or Mr Brazil, I'm sure they could find him. Well, it's easy to find Mr Brazil in that part of the world, isn't it? Oh, of course it is, yes. Mm. Yeah, Rumbustious. Yes.
Quite right. Uh, now, we've got Ask Porky coming up very shortly, yep. but uh, we've got more to do before uh, before then. You can tweet us at the two mics. Uh, find us on uh, uh, Twitter individually. It's Mike Parry 8 <laughs> Dong these right. days. Well, because we haven't got any aircraft carriers now, and that was a, that was about the Ark Royal. Was it? Right, yeah, it was. It was about oh, the wasn't Ark it Royal. just about a guy sailing away from his loved one on, no, a, on, a, on no, a cruise no, ship? No, 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 no. That was Rod Stewart's, that was the theme to a documentary they did. They went... yeah, but he didn't write it for the documentary, did he? He may have done. No, he didn't. The song he may, was he just, may have done. No, the song was just written about a couple who was splitting well, up because one of them was having to sail away. Right. Well, anyway, it was attached to the uh, it was attached to the Ark Royal documentary, and it was an absolutely magnificent series. You saw the Ark Royal, you know, on a mission that mm. lasted about three months, three yeah. and a half months. And the most poignant bit was when they got back to Portsmouth, and of course, all the families waiting on the quayside. All the guys dashed down the gangplanks, you know, and they grabbed their wives and their children, and all that. And then two soldiers, at least, off every trip meet their girlfriends mm. on the quayside, get down on their knees and propose marriage and yeah, all that yeah, kind I of stuff. It, you know yeah, what I remember mean? watching it, but it's, the it's, song was not written for that it's show. Brilliant. Well, it, it's attached to that show. It makes well, it everybody might, well, believe it, might, it. Well, it doesn't make everybody believe it. It makes uh, you believe it. And I remember the last scenes of the show... Not even a Rod Stewart song, anyway. ..coming up the channel towards uh, Portsmouth yeah. and... Uh, and they see, you know, swishing off the bow of the Ark Royal. Brilliant. And it makes me so sad that these days we haven't got a Royal Navy. There is no Royal Navy. Why do you get sad about that? Because it's a damned, you know, it's, it's an outrage. We are an island nation. We had the great... Do you know when... Um, oh, we still have got a Navy. It's not a very big one. Hang on, can I just tell you this? Before right. the Second World War, mm. the Royal Navy yeah. was bigger than the combined navies of the United States, Germany, Russia... And another nation I can't remember, probably Japan. Well, don't you think that's a bit out of proportion? No, no, not at all, because we, because we rule the waves. And, no, and well, we don't rule the waves anymore. Well, we should rule the waves. Why? If we ruled the waves, well, if we ruled the waves now, for instance, mm. we would be able to properly control the the shocking scenes of tens of thousands of displaced people trying to get across the Mediterranean. Well, what would we do with them? Well, we no, we we, we would make an orderly. A procession of ships going there to help aid these people and right. to help get it all right. Well, We'd what would we do though? What would we do? Yeah. Well, we'd make sure that they, you well, know, would you get them all on the navy ships and bring them all back here. No, you wouldn't do that. Well, what you'd, would you do then? You'd, you'd make sure they were safe and not on boats that were pushed well, into so the. Yeah, but safe how though? Into the. I'm trying to explain to you. These boats were pushed into the Mediterranean yeah. with only like you know a few gallons of fuel on, so yeah. that they 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 uh, conk out after a few miles so and they then they saved. sink and all that so kind of stuff. So they get saved. They get saved. And they get taken back to right. shore. So they... what would having a navy there make any difference about? They wouldn't be able to do it. These people wouldn't be able to set sail in these ships. Oh, you mean so they'd have to stay where they were? Yeah, exactly. The well, that's not very safe for them, is it? It's very safe indeed. The na- well, they're the- leaving because they're in danger. No, no, no. They're leaving because they're seeking a better life. They're not necessarily in danger. Well, I think most of them are. And, uh, and, and what the Navy would do is they would blockade all these places mm. where all these things happen and, right. and, and sort it all out. So I mean, we would just blockade I don't know why I've port. got to explain all that to you, Mike. You well, know, no, to any because, intelligent person. No, because that's that a, it, to me, that's an objectionable foreign policy that, that I don't is, think we should follow. Normal. Well, I'm telling you, we'd have more control over it if we had a Navy. We don't have a Navy anymore, and it's a damn disgrace. When I first moved to my place in Gosport, I used to look out over the harbour. It's and, the Porky Jinx, actually. And, Ever and, since you moved uh, there, the Navy's been become sort of a tenth of what it used to be. It has. And there used to be two aircraft carriers, yeah. there used to be five or six other ships there. It's nothing now. Well, I don't understand. Get the occasional right. 45. And I'm looking forward to going down there at the end of the month yeah. for this uh, show that we're doing. Have yes. they not, why didn't they keep Actually, that's one a week of the... on Saturday. Yeah, is it really? Week oh, on Saturday. Quick, Guildhall, Portsmouth. Hope we're going to see you there, folks. Now, um, yeah. what about keeping one of the aircraft carriers just as a floating museum? Why didn't they do that? Uh, a, I mean, somebody, they've got HMS Belfast sitting in the Thames. Yeah, there. yeah, somebody's got to pay for it and it doesn't work. So they sent it off to Turkey and now it's been demolished and turned into... Uh, Unbelievable. R- they say always it's turned into razor blades, but I can tell you exclusively mm. there's such little demand for razor blades in the world these Is days it? because of, uh, you know, throwaway razors yeah, yeah. That, they, that it's not even turned into razor well, blades. Surely razor blades are in throwaway razors, aren't they? Uh, well, only a very thin strip of uh, of blade compared uh-huh. to the razor blades I'm talking about. You know, we used right, to go on the old Wilkinson ones, ones yeah. yeah. And and most of the Ark Royal will end up as uh, cans of beans. Right. How about that? Well, they come How back to that? you in that way, then, don't they? How about they? that? It's they, not, come, it's not they come back to you in Portsmouth in that way. Now, Damn talking disgrace. about sea, there's an amazing story in the papers yesterday about a woman uh, who suffers from a very, mm. very rare illness, mm. which is called, believe it or not, uh, mal uh, de debacmont, yeah. which is uh, uh, the illness of de- uh, disembarkation, apparently. It's yeah. when you go on a ship 
And she, this woman's only been on a ship, I think, once. And, uh, and what happened to her? Ever since then, uh, she's basically been suffering from seasickness. And she's got kind of sea legs. She falls, uh, she falls over from time to time. People think she's drunk from, all the time. From one trip? From one trip, yeah. She went yeah. to see a specialist. It's, uh, it's disembarkment syndrome, they call it. A rare condition that causes the sufferer to feel a continuous rocking sensation or loss of balance. So she staggers around all the time. People think that she's yeah. uh, inebriated. They think she's inebriated. It's absolutely That's extraordinary. a terrible thing. And few, it says fewer than a thousand people in the UK have been di- diagnosed with this particular disorder. And it, mm. was, uh, d- it was first noted as far back as the 18th century when crew and passengers reached dry land after long trips by sea. Really? I mean, there is some truth to that. If you've ever, have you, I don't know if you've ever been on a long voyage. Yeah, of course I have. But when I, was, when I went sailing in the, uh, in the Caribbean many years ago, yeah. um, and we were, we were just actually staying on the, on, the, on the yacht, you know, mm. and when you did hit dry land, there was a sort of sea legs oh, yeah. thing going on. Well, I'll tell you who's the best example of it. You mm. may not remember this. You may have been too young. But do you remember the guy who, who, sold, uh, who sailed around the world on his own and ended up back in Cornwall Francis where he Chichester. came from? Sir Francis Chichester. Yeah, I remember him, yeah. Do you remember he got off the boat? And, and his legs went all wobbly, literally. Yeah. And he had to be held up in front of, mm. you know, like the local MP or yeah. somebody or some great Hey, dignitary. did I ever tell you that story of when... Mm. Do you remember Richard Branson tried to make the fastest crossing across yes. the Atlantic? Yes, uh, In, like, a, a, a massive speedboat, basically. Yes, that's right, yeah. And I was in New York at the time because he was going from New York to, uh, to Ireland. And he yes. Was, but it, in the end, it got scuppered because he hit a bit of the, uh, uh, the Air India plane that was floating in the ocean. Do you remember? Unbelievable, Which yeah. Which was an incredible thing. Mm. But anyway, Che Blythe was the guy that was in charge of this boat, right? Mm. And they were launching it from the Water Club, which yes. was down on, uh, know, you know, just on the east side off 30, 34th Street. Yeah. And I assumed that well, what they were going to do, they, said, they, they explained it all to us, they were going to time, time the, uh, the trip from the, uh, the lighthouse out by the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, right? Yes. So uh, we were all kind of hanging around on the boat as we were a press conference, mm. there was a bit of champagne mm. being cracked and all that. And I was wearing a suit, funnily enough, right. and, and they started pushing the boat away. And Che mm. Blythe uh, suddenly walked around the corner of this boat, and I was standing on it, and mm. he's like, what the hell are you doing on here? Mm. And I said, well, I'm going out with you to, uh, to the point at which you start mm. the race. And he's mm. like, we're not stopping. He said, if you don't get off now, you're coming to Ireland. Yeah. And he literally threw me off the boat. I nearly went in the water. Really? And he threw me onto the quayside, because the boat yeah. took off, yeah. and it went herring down the East River, and we then followed it in a chase boat, and we were going so fast that my tie actually was undone by the wind, right? And it then flew off. Well, your tie undid itself. My tie undid itself because oh, that's God. how fast we were going. We did about like 25, 30 knots it's down amazing. the East River. And sure enough, they got to the Verrazano Narrows Bridge, and that was when they started the clock. Yeah. So we didn't get any pictures of that at all. No. But, no. I, but I came very close to travelling across the Atlantic with Richard Branson. That would have been funny, wouldn't it? You it know, would have been. You know, old Graham's gone missing, where is he? Or drowned at sea, and then you suddenly turn up in Ireland. Well, I think they might have thrown me off because one of the things that they told me later was that, well, they probably didn't want you on because of the extra weight. Well, now, exactly. don't make jokes about it. No, no, that's absolutely but, but true. They, they'd absolutely kind of worked that's out absolutely the, true. the, 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 uh, the premium amount of weight yeah. they wanted on the boat. No, that is absolutely true. They mm. want you off because of the weight. Um, that woman, by the way, yeah. I just looked that up. She says that her daily routine involves walking on what she describes as it being like a bouncy like castle a bouncy all castle, day long. Right. Yeah. Her legs just it keep bouncing. terrible. I went across the um, Atlantic in the QE2. Yeah. That's not around anymore, either. That's Was that a boat freebie? Speed scrap. It was a facility trip. You facility? Know, was, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And, did you um, have a first-class cabin? I did, actually, did yeah, you? with a balcony. I bet that was nice. Mm. And I, and I, uh, I ate one night at the captain's table, ah, right. which is really good, you know. And Any stories to tell from that? Well, the, the only yourself. thing was, the weather going across the Atlantic is not great. No. It's not like, you know, being in the Bahamas. No, there's huge like, swells, isn't it? Yeah, swells and all that kind of stuff. Mm. But there's a, there's, a, there's a bar at the back of the QE2 on mm. the top deck, oh, yeah. which nobody goes to because it's, it's the most forlorn part of the boat, you know. You, all, all you can see is the sea behind it. The stern. The, the, the stern, the, the skies are grey and mm. all that. But it's got a bar there. Right. And is the it bar- outside or inside? It's outside. Right. And the, and the, and the barman there, I mean, he, I mean, he had a long job. He only had served out three or four people a day. Yeah. So he was, he was permanently inebriated, permanently bladded, honestly. <laughs> and I used to go and see him every day and yeah. say, Hi, Jimmy, he was a scout, sir. Right. All right, mate, how are you, son? Uh, yeah, have one on the house. I used to have, like, <laughs> ten on the house, you know. Well, they're not all free anyway. Jimmy. It was all free. Yeah. I mean, he used to, he used to lie on the old... Uh, he used to put out the sun, de- uh, the sun lounges. Mm. But he, nobody else ever came along, and he used to lie on him himself. Right. It was an all-day party every day for Jimmy the for bar, him. the barman. Party for one. He, a party for one at the back of the boat, and, and I used to go and see him. It was marvellous. But when I got off in uh, in New York yeah. at Pier 99 or yeah, whatever, yeah. you know, um, 
I had that sensation mm. of the old uh, the the one key. Well, presumably you've that. been in Jimmy's bar for quite some time as well. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I spent all day there. You mm. know, it was a. I mean, once you'd done the tour, they had about eleven bars on yeah. the boat. Once you'd done the tour once, it wasn't worth doing again. Wasn't it full of people of a certain age, kind of looking for husbands as well? On every trip, at least two people died. Really? Because what the only story got out of it was the, <laughs> the it was the world's uh, most uh, travelled mortuary. Yeah, right. Um, because and and they were usually ninety year old Americans. Mm. I mean, the old blue rinse expression yeah. was never more true. That's what I'm saying. Too. But normally there's yeah. quite a lot of rather wealthy women. Oh, very well. Widows who are looking for a bro- sort of small, sprightly well, young man to marry. I don't know about Did that. Did you not mate. get approached by any of them? Not really. Not really. Because you would have been quite a few years younger in that point. Oh, would have been quite a few years younger. No, no. There were, there, I mean, there's some very nice young ladies on uh-huh. the boat. There was no point in chasing the old, um, you know, blue rinse. Really? Because they were they were quite elderly. Did you not try to lure any of them into your first class cabin with, uh, the, with the balcony? Well, I can't comment on I bet you exactly did. what. I bet you did. I can't comment on the intimacy of my relations aboard that ship because, mm. of course, some young ladies may not wish to disclose the fact that they were in intimacy. Well, you don't have the to name them. Do you know what I mean? You don't have to name them. Well, you know, you know, I'm just, you know, just. I think I've got to be discreet. Okay, you're going to be discreet. discreet. First time for everything. Yes, yes. Uh, he is Mike Perry. I'm Mike Graham. Coming up next, and loads of people in considerably large numbers now are sending in. Oh, we've got so. Okay. Much stuff coming okay. in there over good. the course of the day. I want day. to help as many uh, people as I the, possibly the, can. The, you know, the key is to try and help as many people mm. as we can, but mm. without doing it too quickly, I think, because we don't want to give people short shrift either. No, no. Um, so, so be generous with your answers yeah. if you could, um, but but relatively brief. Uh, the first one is from Rodney. Uh, he says it's mine and my wife's first wedding anniversary mm. next weekend. What should we do to celebrate it? Uh, I should go away somewhere, and the best place to go to make it seem romantic and fulfilling is quintessential Middle England, OK? Mm. And where I, would that be? Well, somewhere like um, uh, Broadway in the Cotswolds, OK? okay? Right. And although that has some associations with Cheltenham, the races and all that, it's a good... F- f- it's a fair way away from Cheltenham, I'd say, 20 miles away, right? right. But also, and, if you go there when Cheltenham's not on, yeah. presumably it's easy to get Oh, yeah, road, yeah, it's it? beautiful. And the beauty about it is that Broadway is at the end of a road, if you see what I mean. Mm. You don't get a road that goes through Broadway. Right. You go to Broadway and you come to a cul-de-sac at mm. the end of Broadway High Street. OK. And that's it. So you, you don't have any passing traffic or anything. It's beautiful. Yeah. You can also, you can stay in a number of hotels there. There's several very good hotels. Yeah. The main one there is the... Um, Used to go there for uh, conferences. I've forgotten the name. Yeah, I know. I know. But it's 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 a great hotel in the high street. But I mean, you can get look. Can you get a room for any for any budget, or is it going to have to? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. There are there are some there are some uh, you know lower priced hotels, but it's fantastic place. But what I was going to say was, if you go up to the end of the high street in Broadway, Mm. you go into a farm and you go behind this farm, and there's a kennels where they keep the hunting dogs because it's big hunting territory, and they're beautiful dogs. They're called uh, what are they called? Basset hounds. No, no, not basset hounds. They're just called hounds, aren't they? No. They're, they're, they're called hounds, but they're, they're, uh, Peter Mandelson had one. Yeah. Beagles, beagles, beagles. Are they beagles? Yeah, they're beagles, mm. that's right, yeah. And anyway, if I you think go... just hunting hounds, actually. If you go through there, you walk into a field, and then you go up what's called Broadway Mount. Yeah. And if you get to the top, it is the most... And it's a walk takes about 20 or 25 minutes. Mm. And even I, with one-third of my heart working, yes. was able to get to the top. Right. It is the most peaceful place I've ever been in the world. It's like it's like stairway to heaven. Okay. Honest to God, right. I would go there. Well, there you go, Broadway. That's the place to go. Uh, now, this is from Neil, uh, who mm. says, uh, "What is Mike Perry's bucket list to do before he dies?" You don't have to give us everything on it. Yeah, but a couple of things, maybe. Uh, there's nothing left for me to do. Really, I've done everything. I do not fear death. Death, you know, is uh, is inevitable. Everybody has to uh, have to cope with it. But uh, to me, it's going to be an adventure to find out what happens next. Okay? okay, I don't have a bucket list because there's nothing left I want to do. I've had a very, very lucky life. Okay, apart from the fact that the old ticker collapsed ten years ago, <laughs> only one third of it now works. I have had a a, a splendidly lucky life, and uh, I regret nothing. Je ne regret rien. Very good. Uh, here's one from Dino. Uh, who I think is a bit of a Bristol fan. He says, seeing as Liverpool and Everton won nothing this year, should they merge? Best season for Bristol football, he says. Uh, no, that's a ridiculous you know supposition. What he's getting at, don't you? Uh, yeah, of course I do. I mean, the Bristol team should merge because they've never won anything between them in the whole of the history of the two clubs, which goes back over 225 years. Everton and Liverpool have won everything worth winning. Everton haven't won a Champions League, although Liverpool have won five, but Everton have won European trophies, and uh, both teams have won the top division on a multiple number of occasions and the FA Cup similarly. And so I would say that the, it, it's preposterous for Everton and Liverpool to merge. If they did, they'd have to wear a Barcelona shirt, blue and red, and they'd have to build a stadium together called the Merseyside Bowl. Well, in they the middle, could do that in Stanley Park. Middle of Stanley they? Park, absolutely, and none of us want that on Merseyside, so the answer is no, it ain't never going to happen. Anfield's being rebuilt anyway for Liverpool, that's good, 
that gives Everton the green light to go ahead and rebuild their own stadium. Kelly says this, what can be done about climate change? Biblical weather, sunshine and doom-laden skies and yeah. hailstones next time. What's going on? No, what we should do is we should all embrace biblical weather. It's the most brilliant day. I was out today, one minute it was hailstoning, and hailstones... A lot of thunder today the, as well. Yeah, hailstones the size of marbles were bouncing off my bonce. Were they? Yeah, they were. Isn't that and painful? Then, uh, no, not at all. Uh, I just nutted them all away. And then uh, a few minutes later, it was bright sunshine. Mm. I mean, bright to the sense it's of, sort you of know, day you'd see a dazzling. rainbow, isn't it? Dazzling, yeah. Sort of day you should have seen a rainbow. I didn't see any rainbows today. I was looking for them, I didn't see them. And, uh, and that sort of weather that we should embrace. Now, that is nothing to do with, what do you say, climate global warming? Change, yeah. Climate change. Nothing to do with climate change. That's, that's called cyclical weather, and it's all to do with sunspots. And if all these um, burks and jerks who uh, tell you that, you know, the world's going to uh, flood because the, the sea's going to raise uh, by three feet and all that would just... Have a look at the the way that meteorological uh, pattern of weather has gone over the last 10,000 years. They'd see that I'm right and they're wrong. OK. Stephen says this. I just found out my wife was lured to London with a first-class train ticket mm. by her ex-boyfriend. What mm. should I do? Uh, well, I'd get upset because um, if it's the same story as mine, that same guy actually cook-holded the same woman 28 years ago. What same guy? Uh, if this this chap I'm talking about, well, you who think is, he's referring to you, I think he's referring to me, oh, right. and, and he's a cuckolded husband and all mm. that kind of stuff. But don't worry about it because you have to remember there is somebody out there for everybody. That's what I've always believed. Okay, uh, all this about finding your yeah, soulmate, I mean, you know, steal someone from somebody else. Then, finding yeah. your soulmate is the most overused expression in the history of romance. Oh, I found my soulmate. Oh, I've lost my soulmate. You know, a load of rubbish. I mean, oh, my soulmate's been stolen away from me by her ex-boyfriend. Yeah, you know, something like that. The idea there's only one person out there that you can spend the rest of your life with is so ludicrous because what's the chances of meeting the only one person who's put on this earth to be your soulmate? The chances are zero. Hmm. There are, I would say, even now, even now in this country, half a million women that I could meet and make the first Mrs Parry and call them my soulmate. Half a million? Yeah, at least. That's a bit going on over on the top. Now, here's one from Becky, uh, speaking yeah. of uh, first Mrs Parry. She says, Mike, forget mice and hornets. My house is played by a praying mantis. Can't set fire to the house. What can I do? Help. What is a praying mantis? Praying mantis is that terribly kind of green thing. It's very famous, is it not, for the female praying mantis to eat uh, its mate after oh, they've... Uh, so this is like a big spider. ...copulated. Well, it's more like a cross between a kind of a grasshopper and a rather long... Uh, I, mean, I could show you a picture of one. It's, I'll tell you what I'd green. do with that. I'd get, I'd, I'd get the old uh, paint stripper fire burner out, what's it called? The flamethrower. The flamethrower. Get the flamethrower and give it to the mantis. I can't stand things like that. They're revolting, uh, uh, utterly ugly and frightening creatures. I'd just get rid... Or, I'll tell you what, if you can't, move house. Yeah, you may have to move house, I'm yeah, afraid. Yeah. Uh, here's one from Kevin. I accidentally called my wife fat. What yeah. is the best way of backtracking and soothing my wife's foul mood and anger? How do you get out of that one? Uh, I think what you say is that even though you called her fat, you're not saying that fat is unattractive. Yeah. Uh, what you're saying is that you like the uh, the fuller figured woman. Mm. Okay, that'll make her feel that she's voluptuous, which yeah. is a word women like, and that will get you back in her good books. And then, if I were you, I would just close your eyes and get on with it, mate. Richard says this, uh, Mike, what age do you believe life actually begins at? Most people say life begins at 40. He doesn't say whether he is 40 or not. Life begins the minute you realise you're on Earth and there are things there to be done to try and bring you reward in life. So I, I think life begins... Well, life began for me the first time I started earning money on my own. I was 10 and did a newspaper round. Hmm. So life begins at 10. Life or, begins or, at 10. Or, or younger, uh, some of my mates at 8 were doing the milk round with the milkman. So uh, life begins as soon as you uh, start earning your own money. So that's your answer to everything, isn't it? Money. No, no what I'm saying is, well, you know, independence is what life's all about. Without independence, you're nobody and nothing. If you've got to rely on somebody else for your income, for your money for somebody telling you what to do, then your life is not worth living. If you've been listening to the show tonight, you'll see that Rory McElroy is the greatest example of a man who is wholly independent. I've been wholly independent all my life. My life began when I spent my first £1.10 and ten shillings uh, earnings from my newspaper round on a new Hornby train. Uh, Roy says this, uh, my wife, um, Yali, wants to use my truck. She passed her test in Venezuela in two lessons. Should I risk her wrath or my truck? 
That's a really weird question. Why? Passing driving tests in Venezuela. Well, his wife might be from Venezuela. One of the weirdest countries in the world. Why is it weird? Oracana Yoko, what's it called? Huh? The, uh, what's, the, uh, what's the waterfalls yeah, called? Orinoco, you mean? Orinoco, yeah. the Orinoco, that's the one. Mm. And, uh, and run... Why is Venezuela uh, weird? Well, it was run by a very strange man who was a kind of pseudo-commie who wanted to sort of uh, try and destroy America by selling cheap oil to the Russians and all this kind of stuff, you mm. know what I mean? Uh, uh, it's well, you very mean he nationalised his own oil? Yeah, nationalised his own oil. Right. Rather than giving it away to the Americans. Yeah, that's right. What's exactly. wrong with that? Yeah, well, I think I think he had ulterior motives. He wanted to sort of um, rope Cuba into a communist plot to invade uh, Florida, in my view. Right. Now, um, the answer to that one is I would never trust somebody who wasn't qualified to drive a truck to get into a truck. Mm. And my view is that in this country, when youngsters pass their driving tests, they're simply not qualified to drive cars on motorways and main roads. So I suspect that the, the driving <coughs> test for a truck is exactly the same. My answer is... Do not let your spouse anywhere near that truck until you're happy that uh, she is qualified to handle it. So incur her wrath. This one actually refers back mm. to something you said earlier. Mark mm. says this. Recently I had a nice windfall. Should I invest in Krugerrands? Uh, no, don't invest in Krugerrands these days. If you've got a nice wind, uh, windfall, depending on how much it is, you buy property. It's the only thing worth investing in these days, believe me. Do not speculate on uh, dicky um, investment things, Ponzi schemes, all that kind of stuff. You can get caught up in all those sort of things. Invest in something solid, bricks and mortar, the most solid thing you can invest in. And if you can't afford to buy a house yourself or a flat or apartment, invest in a portfolio, which will give you a percentage share of property growth. Now, I'm being told... To hurry up, we're going yes. to try and squeeze two more in. So, okay. two very quick ones. Okay. This one from Adam. I'm on the lash later. What will help me with my hangover tomorrow? Lean ham, a baguette, uh, fish and chips twice, or a bottle of Pinot? Any one of those, but you should never ever go out on the lash thinking, oh, I'm going to be bladderated tonight. I never go out seeking bladderation. I go out and handle it. And I can honestly say I cannot remember ever having a hangover in my life that incapacitated me. Excellent point. And uh, finally, on a sporting front, uh, this is from Noah. Uh, Pep, Klopp, Ancelotti or stick with Pellegrini for City this season? Well, City's not my team. So, frankly, that's a decision for Manchester City fans. All I would say is that uh, no way is... um, is what's his name? Uh, um, you know, from um, Bayern Munich. No, from Bayern Munich. Uh, oh, you mean Guardiola? Pepe Guardiola's not going to go there. That's for sure. Pellegrini should go at the end of this season because he's actually lost his spark in, in motivating his players. I would take Klopp tomorrow. I would definitely take Klopp. Klopp is he your might man. Be going to Real Madrid, of course, Manchester might City have had a dream existence in the last five or six years. You Manchester City fans should be extremely grateful for what you've been given: a free stadium, free hundreds of millions of pounds, free team, free manager. Honestly, I sometimes wonder whether, you know, God smiled on you and not on others. I'm rather envious. You don't deserve it because your heritage and history is nothing like those of clubs like mine. You don't want to start upsetting people in Manchester. You I'm know, not we're upsetting going, anybody in Manchester. June, you know, don't do be ridiculous. Show, the Lowry, for heaven's sake. No, it's, uh, a fi- it's a fine institution, Manchester City. You've been very lucky. Indeed. Uh, that was Ask Porky. Uh, more questions at the same time next week. Sorry if we didn't get to read yours out. We've just got so many now. Um, but yeah. do keep sending them in. Uh, and they will be, of course, uh, sifted through by independent sifters. This is Talk Sport. On DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM. The pressure's on now. Relieve the itch. Talk Sport. Funny, which clearly is not. Yes. Do you realise right. that deep down I have a great respect for you? Yeah, well, I hope so. Can tell you what, mate, one of these days, bang, it's going to slap you right in the face. Really? You know? The pork See, again, re- right? resorting to violence yeah. as ever. Now, a couple yeah. of octopus-related uh, pieces of information Radio. here. Uh, one from uh, Tim in Huddersfield. You'll like this because it's against okay. me. Uh, he says, uh, two mics, Harry, show Gordon. Gormless Graham, a video on YouTube called Octopus Escapes from Boat, right. and he might believe these creatures are amazing yeah. and not just to eat the great big wally. I'm not saying I, I don't think what, they're amazing. They are amazing creatures. I haven't creatures. seen that, but I bet you that's about an octopus who's been captured. It's on the boat mm. and suddenly, you know, well, I would imagine scrambles so. around, leaps over the side, yeah. back into the sea. I would imagine that so. That would be fantastic it to would. see. I'm well, going to watch that Look it up on YouTube. Yeah, I'm not oh, saying yeah. I don't believe that yeah, they're yeah. amazing creatures. All I'm saying is, is they're also very tasty. And here's one from Brian and Islington. Horrible thing to say. You might remember this. Dear Mr Graham, octopuses are also experts at predicting football matches. Do you remember Paul the German octopus yeah. from the 2010 World Cup? I was at, I was in Germany for yeah. six weeks for that, and and it, he became such a celebrity, Paul the octopus. And at the 
the time, we all thought it's just a, you know, it's just a coincidence and all that, but didn't realise how intelligent octopus I are, you mm. know. Octopus I, yeah. yeah. Now, Any, anyway, it. look, uh, talking about octopuses, yes. you know, tentacles, people who have a reach into every area. Oh yes, life. very good, uh, what, what, very well linked. Want to talk to you about uh, Clive Woodward because yes. th- this infuriates me. Mm. What about this? So Clive Woodward is holding talks in Paris about a job with France's national rugby team. Yeah. Uh, it was revealed yesterday England's World Cup winning coach as a surprise target to take over from beleaguered coach Philippe Saint-André yeah. after the World Cup. Because they had a pretty miserable Six Nations, the French, didn't they? Yeah, they did, yeah. Didn't now, this to well. me is a lot of disgrace. Why? How an Englishman can go over and manage probably our most... Not, not our not our most um, active opponents mm. in the sense that they're, they're not the greatest... Well, they're quite uh, a big rival on the, gr- on the grounds that there's not that many big rivals in rugby, no, are they? No, they're, they're a massive rival and, you know... Um, I remember talking to uh, Will Carling once. And well, you, of course, covered the uh, World Cup in I France. I covered the World you? Cup in 2007 yeah. in France. I am the talk sport uh, rugby correspondent. Yeah. But talking to Will Carling, he said, oh, no, the greatest pleasure in life, Mike, was always going to Paris and turning the French over. Yeah. You know, that, that, that was it. I mean, that was the one game that they all look forward to. Yeah. Now, this is the equivalent, to put it into perspective, for English football fans who don't know that much about rugby, and not myself, of course, and uh, what I'm saying is, is that if Alf Ramsey after winning the World Cup for England in 1966, mm. had decided in about 1976 yeah. to go manage the Germans, yeah. then there would have been I outrage in this so. country. I of course there would. So. Of course there would. It's an, it's, but honestly, we are surely now living in a very I find this impossible no. to, to accept. Well, I think you're being very impossible. little Englander about No, I'm not right? being little Englander. Because, because here's the situation. This is outrageous. No, here's the situation. Clive Woodward has uh, been away from, from uh, international rugby union for, for quite a few years yeah. in terms of when he was what in charge of What year did we England. win the World Cup? Well, it was way back in, like, 2002 Three, or something. Was it 2003? 2003. 2003. I mean, a long time ago. Yeah. So you're talking, like, over 12 years, right? That's right. Um, and so, at the end of the day, surely he's not, uh, in, this, in this day and age of global sport... Well, I mean, how does all... anybody know if he's any good as a coach well, anymore? I mean, you've seen Scotland having, having New Zealand coaches. You've seen, yes, I've seen um, all that, but not seen, an Englishman you know... who won the World Cup for England going and working for one of the main rivals. And, in fact, the, the most intense rival we've got just across the channel. I think it's not a disgrace, and I think it should be stopped. Well, hang and on. I don't think it should be allowed. Maybe and, by the way, do... I think maybe... it says a lot about Clive Woodward, who's mm. unable now, in my view, to get a proper job in rugby in this country. Well, if that's the case, then maybe this is a good thing, because no. he'll go to France and he won't mm. be a success, because don't well, forget, that could be the case. this is a guy who went to Southampton Football Club, I was about to if say, you remember, and failed ludicrous. miserably to try and impose this kind of Woodward-esque, you know, sort of uh, amazing coaching Yeah, this sort of mantra. Yeah. Coaching uh, mantra. Um, uh, and, and he had them, and as far as I know, listening to some of the Southampton players who were there yeah. at the time, he had them doing all kinds of things that yeah. were more to do with rugby than to do with football. It, it, it was a joke. Hasn't he also dabbled in being an administrator in athletics? Yes, I believe so. Yeah, exactly. And now, going to turn back to rugby, if he was any good... If he was any good... Isn't he sort of just doing what Sven Joran Eriksson has done all his on. career, though? If he was any good and wanted to get back into rugby, mm. surely the English should take him back. Well, no, the World Cup winning coach. Because you wouldn't ever go back, that's my point. Well, I mean, well, so you... why are the French taking him then? Are they that desperate? Well, the French might think that he's the best option that they've got because well, maybe I he think, has I... got the experience of winning a World Cup I and think, they'd like that. I think it says an awful lot about the game of rugby that, quite frankly, you know, they, they'll settle for, uh, you know, average rather than the pursuit of excellence. Mm. Uh, and the pursuit of, ex- pursuit of excellence should be whatever he... Uh, yeah, his last job was, uh, was, was, was uh, being in charge of the British and Irish Lions in 2005. In rugby, yeah, that's right. He still believes he has plenty to offer, he yeah. says. But that was the that was yeah, the one. I think, I mean, I think that I was would... the one when he took Alistair Campbell with yeah, him. That's right. For goodness' sake, I mean, you know, because because he was uh, he was so into sort of PR, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, funny and, enough, a dodgy dossier wasn't of much use uh, to them. Uh, no, exactly, it wasn't. No, yeah. and uh, and they stitched up Cipriani, didn't they, between them? That's right, they did. Because uh, uh, Alistair Campbell allegedly told Woodward to go out for a, a quiet walk with mm. Cipriani and I, and then had a photographer hiding in a tree right. to take a picture, which then got captioned, you know, a warm, you know. Uh, conversation between the two men and all that kind of stuff. So, so he's more. I think he's always more concerned about the number of people around him and his team. He had hundreds of people, mm, didn't he? He did. We took off to the World Cup. You and know, I think, coaches for this, coaches for but that. But I think, I mean, and your analogy about Alf Ramsey is correct. Mm. If we were still in the sixties and seventies, yes. but we're not, and we've yeah. now moved into this very global sporting arena where you know I don't think it would matter. For example, look how many you know foreign coaches England have had. Yeah. They've had Fabio Capello. Yeah. They've had Sven Joran Eriksson. You know, having an English coach clearly is not necessarily the answer, is it? And and, and by the way, by 
by the way, can I just say yeah, that, that a lot of people inside the game of rugby who know a little bit more about it than me, although obviously I was the uh, talk correspondent in 2007. There can't be, there can't be many, sure. Say that actually it was, uh, it was Johnson who masterminded the World Cup victory yeah. and that they used to tell Woodward to push off when he'd mm. come on the pitch at half-time yeah. to try and tell them how to, you know, rearrange their tactics. Yeah. You know, um, uh, Martin Johnson would just say, forget it, Clive, just get lost, yeah. you know, we'll sort this out. Right. And that he and Delalio and the senior players actually took control. Yeah. Talking about... Well, do you know when, uh, when are, Graham Henry, yeah, whose book I helped to write, by the way, oh, uh, yeah. was in charge of the British and, uh, and Irish Lions, yes. and he took yeah. them down And, and how much help did you give him um, in this book? Well, he, he, he credits me with a great deal of help. He wrote his own book. But, does uh, your name appear on uh, the book? My name does appear in the book, yeah. No, uh, on the book. In does the, it no, on the book? No, it appears in the acknowledgements at the beginning yeah, of the book. Uh, I see. One phone call from Mike Graham. Thanks no, very much. Yeah. No, because yeah. I actually used to employ him in the mirror to yeah. write a column for yeah, us. Yeah, well, he scratch my back, you scratch mine, not We exclusively broke the story that he was going to get the Lions job, which was followed by every Fleet Street newspaper. Yeah. because we got it first. Yes. Um, and he's still quite a good friend of mine. Money. Yeah. Uh, and when he became, anyway. when he became uh, the coach of the All Blacks, probably the top job in world rugby, yes. uh, we still used to talk to each other on a regular basis. Oh, I, I see. That. OK. So anyway, what, so what's the story? when he yeah. went down uh, to uh, uh, Australia with the, with the British and Irish Lions, yeah. and he, he, he was... Uh, continually being messed around by all the English players because he came yes. from the Welsh team background. Right. The feeling was that yeah. he was only bringing certain Welsh players with him. Yes. And so there was a cliquey thing going on. And basically he said that the main reason that the Lions lost that tour mm. was because Martin Johnson pretty much took control. Yeah. And no matter what he told Martin Johnson to do, mm. Martin Johnson said, I'll tell you what, I'm not doing that. I'm yeah. going to do this. And, right. and, and because of the tactics that they invoked, mm. uh, they didn't win. Well, they are. Now, it's all about teamwork, right? Mm. And I've seen this report this week about um, inter-office relationships. Oh, yes. And how um, the most irritating person in the office yeah. is the the jerk who's sitting next to you or near you or somewhere. He just wants to talk all the time. Small talk. Yeah. You know, things, oh, how does your weekend go? Yeah, yeah. If anybody ever says that to me, how was your weekend? You yeah. know, I just refuse to speak to them, refuse to answer, you know. I can't stand it, frankly. I, can, I, I Honestly, it drives me mad. The mm. other, But you're not somebody who gets involved with small talk really in any situation. No, I don't want to. Do you know the other one that drives me mad? Mm. If you're away on holiday and you come back, right. for the next three days, mm. people are saying, oh, how was your holiday? Yeah. And like, I refuse to tell them. Well, that doesn't happen to you. You never go on holiday. I, 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 I say, yeah, on. You never go on holiday. I, say, I just say, fine, thank you, and then blank them completely. Yeah. But if, you know, just in case yeah, but the I most was. Fa- the thing you're most famous for here at Talk Sport is mm. not remembering any of the people that you've worked with, you Rubbish. know, because you don't take any notice of them. Them. Don't be ridiculous. It's true. Don't be ridiculous. I can name you several people, but I won't because I don't want to embarrass them. Yeah. Um, who you forgot completely that you worked with? Rubbish. Over the course of several shows, when you were doing the weekend sports breakfast with Eddie Townsend. Oh, wait. When you were doing the sports breakfast with Mr. Brazil. I was, I was in a, a recording studio last week with Mr. Brazil. Yeah. And an extremely attractive young lady, very very uh, talented young lady, mm. came up called Talilia. Talilia. And, yeah. And said, Do you have to uh, name her. Well, I thought I'd tell you because okay. she said, "Oh, I'm your producer today." Oh yeah. And then she started talking about the days we worked together at Talk Sport. And you didn't remember it? No, I didn't. I have to. Re- was it Talia? Talia. 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 That's her name. Talia. 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 Do yeah. you remember? Her second name begins with an L, doesn't it? I don't know. You I don't, don't know her second name. No, I don't know her second name. No. Unbelievable. And, and, and she worked here, did she? Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, well, she, she's very good at what she did. So, so she great. worked here for about two and a half years, apparently. Did she? Yeah. Oh well, there you go. Um, and you didn't remember her. Well, no, because you can't remember everybody you've worked with over, well, uh, you can't remember over a career met... as long and suc- as well, successful got, as mine. Her name wrong from last week. Well, that doesn't matter. I mean, so the thing is, I, I must have had headphones on when she told me what her name was and I couldn't hear her. Now, what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, yeah. the uh, the small talk thing drives me completely bonkers. Yeah. All I really want to talk about is... But I'll tell you what else is really irritating, mm. is when people outside of the office, mm. you know, say, for example, mm. and you can't really help it in a, uh, when you go get your hair cut, you must not like it when people start talking to you when you're sitting there in the barber's chair. Or you go to that kind of uh, mm. fancy place in Sutton, don't you? What's that? You said you went to some Italian barbers or something last time you got your hair done. Yeah, I did, yeah. For about 120 quid. Yeah. Do they not give you all the small talk nonsense? Well, we talk about yeah, Italian like, football because like, they're know, Italian. Like so that's they all go, right. Oh, well, if they know you, that's different. But yeah, if you yeah. go somewhere where maybe they mm. don't know you mm. and they start doing things like... Uh, Going away this year. Oh, I tell you, I tell you what, You're I going away this year. I tell you what, I can't stand. I walked into a boozer. Um, no weeks way, ago. really? Yeah, yeah. I, I, saw, boozer, I, yeah. I can't believe that story. And as I ordered my a pint of London Pride, as the chap started to yeah. um, to start pouring it, yeah. he said, "And uh, and how is this merry day treating you, sir?" <laughs> Literally, that's what he I said. I can imagine that's what that's you would say. That's literally what he said. Yeah. And I felt like saying, "What's that got to do with you?" Yeah. You know, I've asked you to pour me a pint of beer, yeah. not give me some psychological mm. analysis of how my day's yeah. going, you know? Yeah. So shut up and don't appear to be You're jolly. You're so and, rude, and, aren't you? and No, I didn't. I, 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 I just did. I gritted my teeth and I, 
I just said, everything's fine, thank you. Mm. But, uh, you know, but, but in a Did way... Did you not slip him the usual 20 quid and say, just keep him coming, Barman? No, no, no. But in a way that I made it sure he got the message, don't ask me a question yeah. like that again, ever. Yeah. Right. And, and, and the worst thing I, I can't stand about well, the thing Barman I tried... is over jolly and over happy, mm. you know. Oh, hello, how are you? You know, and I don't want to know. I, I, I just... He's Welsh, this guy. No, no, no. There's one guy, he's from, he's from Eastern Europe... Mm. And every time I walk into this pub after I've been for uh, the North Downs, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I hate going in there now because as I go in, he says, hello! He, he actually says, hello! Yeah. Like that. And mm. I think, why are you so jolly? And, right. and you know, well, please I mean, don't drink me like with, that. There's nothing wrong with it as long as they don't continue. You know, your job is to serve drink, just serve it. I mm. do not need, a, you know, a cabaret from you of, uh, hello, how are you today? Yeah. I don't want to know. It's and a bit I... like over-friendly. Some of those over-friendly waiters are waiters in America, isn't it? Yeah, I refuse yeah. to answer questions like that. I'll be your waiter for today. Yeah, yeah, that's really? right. Really? Yeah, great. great. Thanks very much. Yeah. Go give me a drink. The other thing about this report about office people, the office perfectionist is oh, yeah. the man who I don't think we've got any of those at TalkSport, have we? Well, I think we probably have somewhere. The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the type of perfectionist who sets impossibly high standards for others also tends to be narcissistic, antisocial, mm. more likely to make jokes at the expense of others. Well, that's disgraceful. Yeah. I don't recognise anyone here in that uh, in that vein. Really? Yeah. I Thank mean, God when you were that. running the place, you weren't like that at all, were you? No, of course I wasn't. You're not a perfectionist. I, oh, I, no, 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 no. You said you were. No, I didn't say perfectionist. I am a man whose aim in life has always been the pursuit of excellence. Yeah. Have you ever found it? Of course. Really? Yeah. Oh, we'll have to talk some more about that on the show tomorrow. Uh, here's Mike Parry, of course. Tomorrow's going to be Porky Vision. And then the quiz coming up this week uh, is the Eurovision Song Contest, which I'm pretty sure we've done before, uh, but we'll do a different one this yeah, time Yeah, but it's around. on Saturday, isn't it? What? Eurovision Song Contest. Is it? OK. Yeah, yeah. Well, that'll be the first question. Well, I told you. When's yeah. it on? Yeah. Uh, you might at least get one out of ten. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the <laughs> two mics. Look at the light! Don't forget to come back tomorrow for another sparkling, as fizzy as a bottle of champagne, podcast from the two mics. When you're so badly stung, yeah. and when you've lost, and when you're feeling battered and bruised mm. when you got up today, you send out a tweet calling me the worst possible name in that the English language. That was, were, which that was is a typo. Disgraceful, that disgusting. Was a, no, that was a mistake. Against the family value uh, values no, that, that we have for this show. That was a mistake. I don't believe it was a mistake. It was a mistake. You I meant called to say me a count. word, which, which I is... meant to say count, OK? And it came out wrong, because somehow my autocorrect changed it to a word which is unmentionable. Nerds, would you throw Brussels sprouts at an octopus? If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport.